Hello and welcome to Trucking Answers Live. We are back. It is Monday at 1 p.m. and we're all here. So let's say hello to who's here on my screen. Mad Maldi's here. Mark is here. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Mad Maldi said he was here at 12.03. I appreciate that. Hey, uh, I'm looking down at another screen for people out there new or don't know, so I'm not trying to ignore everybody. I have another screen to try to keep up with everything. Trucker Hershey is here. Super Trucker is here. Man, everybody's here. How many people are going to bash Walmart today? I don't know. Depends. Uh, Four Wheeling is here. Big, huge Mike. What's going on? All is great over here today after the ice yesterday. Boy, it was a mess. Jeff, uh, I may give free burritos away. Not sure about that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Andrew is here. Thank you for coming in. Chris, what's happening? Say what? Yeah, Polar Express. Would you work for that guy, though? That's the thing of it. Hey, Edgar, what's happening? Bada Bunk CR England. I saw that earlier. That is just the greatest name ever of a place. Hey, Amanda, how you doing out there? 173 Songwriters here. Will Hazard is here. Thank you for coming in, everybody. I appreciate it. As I try to uh, get updated with technology here. Jared, 2001 Monolithic. Hmm. Former Pam driver here. You're welcome for that, and uh, I appreciate that you're a former driver. Stan, yes, it's good to have you. Thanks for coming in. Sign Cutter from North Dakota. What's going on out there today? How's the weather? That's always the question for that place. Probably not as good as here. The White Knight. Oh, yes, you're early. Light bright. Thank you for coming in. It's great to see you today. Carlos, doing great out here. It is a wonderful day. Every day you get up is another day to uh, to have a great day. That's one way to see it, right? Ryan, -O, what's happening out there? How how goes it with you? Amy, hey, thank you for coming in today. King Bob the Trucker, nobody join England. You work there now. It's a real problem. I've gotten some emails this week from, uh, from a driver, and, uh, you know, his checks, some of his checks have been $300 for seven days net. Now, I mean, come on, England. Really? Do you think you're going to keep people doing that when they're five days past their home time? Come on. And then they're going to complain about, oh, we can't get people. Uh, Fierce Jaws, what's up? Spotlight Casino in Coachella. Wow. What's, uh, hopefully you win a lot of money and spread it around for everybody. GSXR, hello there. What's going on? Cow Mobile. Yes, exactly. Uh, Josh, hey, what's happening, Vlad? The blizzard of slush. So it's worse in Arizona than it is here. That's not great. Joe and Dallas, CRST trainer. Wow. We'll uh, try to be gentle with you today. <laughs> Hello from uh, Sea Hill. Hello from I-85 in Georgia. Clear. Yeah, 60. That's the way I wish it was here. Pretty soon, only, what, seven, eight weeks we should see that? Actually, it's going to be 52 here on uh, Saturday. Sam, hey, what's going on? Kenworth Ryder. Uh, Sierra England has a trainee, training, trainees. Yes. You know, the driver that wrote to me is actually solo, getting uh, 29 cents. And he's five past, five days past his home time, if I remember. And he's been out like seven weeks, some long period of time, and they still won't get him home. It's just ridiculous. And then they wonder why people quit. Well, duh. I mean, come on. One, at least if you say, give somebody home time and you say, all right, you can be home, get them home. Get people home. Come on. Uh, Mr. Flores, what's up from Las Vegas? Wow, I did see that it snowed there. Uh, I couldn't believe that it was snowing in Vegas and ice here. We almost had the same kind of weather. Hey, Monica, what's happening? Bill, what's going on? MDC, thank you for coming in today. Oh, uh, Ryan, oh, phenomenally awesome. Yes, on your way to get loaded. That's what we're talking about, right? Load is where the money is for you. You have Monica won at Spotlight on Saturday. Oh, really? Uh, MDC, I'd like to purchase a truck. Which one? Yeah, everybody can recommend that. I like my Cascadia. I never buy trucks. So uh, maybe ask Ryan what he thinks about his truck. That might be a good way to go. Chris, what's happening? Cash is king trucking. Just had that nice long load from Minnesota. Uh, 48 down there. Not bad. You stayed ahead of the weather. Yes, I'm keeping up with you stalking you as you go along a puppy <laughs> purple right lovely here in south carolina it's 70 boy send some of that up here would you i want to announce this too next week right next week i always only say this on the live show next week not today 
Bluetooth, uh, Blue Parrot Bluetooth headset next week, okay? So that will be uh, next week on the show. I'll announce that a little later as well. Did I go to the World Ag Expo in Tulare? Uh, no, I have not been to that. Lovely here, right? Hello from Tennessee. Pure flat better. Man, everybody is all over. Any international people today? Big shiz. What's happening out there? Oh, Mr. Penske. Roger Penske is here, celebrity. I appreciate you coming in. Joshua finally got home. Finally. Uh, Mad Mal, the only way to do a drop and hook for hazmat. So uh, are, you, are you at a place that pays you extra for hazmat? I always think, you know, I think that you should get paid extra. To go through an extra step, background check, anything extra company asks you to do should pay extra. Extra work, extra money. Werner, don't give you a home time after training. They throw you in a truck, you know, and then they wonder why people leave. Okay. Oh, we're not going to get somebody home. We'll tell them we get them home and then they're not home. And then, oh, why are all these people quitting? Well, duh. What would the people in the office think about that? Uh, let's see. Uh, Fierce Jaws won 500 after spending 100. That's the way to do it. I only spent 20 on lottery tickets and won five. I think I'm doing it wrong. Uh, Lindahl from Good Afternoon from California. Well, what's happening out there? It's morning for you still. Uh, let's see. Mike says it's windy in uh, South Jersey today. That's not good. Uh, Savage CB. Hopefully you're not in the one. I didn't post this. Maybe I'll post it on my Facebook page a little bit. There were some people that were um, urinating all over the bathrooms in I-80, uh, on I-80 somewhere in Iowa, if I remember right. So much they had to close the bathrooms so that they could, like, hose them down with bleach. Gross. I thought, what the heck? $25 flat bonus for hazmat. That's something, right? It's something. It should pay something, and that is something. So a lot of places don't pay anything. So I'm in for that. Uh, taking 47,000 pounds of lumber to Texas to Michigan. Oh, no, tomorrow. You better get going. Holy mackerel. Amanda was refused a DOT physical by Med Express and money not refund because I don't have an insulin waiver. They do not know the law changed. Yeah, you're going to have to print it out, go back in there, gripe at uh, whoever's running the place. I mean, uh, you know, the law change, these places should be on top of that. If we can all find it out, they should be. Print it out and go in there and gripe at them. And really gripe at them. Uh, Dan, can you finance a truck? You could. I wouldn't do it. But there are people that do it. it. That's just a personal thing. You win at the machine, stick a dollar, and win four quarters. That's better than I do on a lot of these scratchers. Joshua doesn't like pack ours. I've heard the engines are bad, too. Driver that can't get home is making 29 cents a mile. Come to Fremont, FCC, right in Nebraska. No forced dispatch. I told him, look, at that kind of pay, even though he has a contract, he should still leave, even though they don't prorate. Because, say, if you went from 300 just to 600, I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, you've doubled your pay. At the $300, remember, minimum wage is 290 290 a week, so for uh, 40 hours. Just that kind of pay, that's not worth staying. It doesn't matter. The contract doesn't matter at that point to me. Here in Loveland, Texas, it's uh, level in Texas. It's cold and snowing. What the heck? Is this, what is it, snow everywhere in the whole country today? Once I saw the snow in Vegas, I, do, I knew the apocalypse was soon upon us. Uh, anytime towing in Vermont is snowing, you're always, uh, bit, you love the snow. You're one of the few people that enjoys it because uh, it increases business. Linda, yeah, get out of there and, you know, let's all head south, I think. I'm about sick of it. Uh, loaded truckers going to the Mark uh, Cho in Louisville to meet trucking answers. Look, I will be at the show in uh, Louisville at the end of March. And uh, at truckinganswersnation.com, I have a links page, and I've got the click-through on there. So you can go there and uh, click to the Mid-America Truck Show and get your tickets. I think February is the last month you can get them free. So if you're planning on attending... You should go get your tickets uh, immediately, and then they're free, and you can see uh, everybody at the end of March. It's going to be great. The Freightliner Cascadia is reliable with the DD-15. We've had mixed results, but my truck hasn't had any problems, so I I personally agree with it. El Paso is 55 degrees. That's great. You're sick of paid parking at the TA. That's the only way to increase parking because, uh, you know, which I, I was... 
I post something and then we don't talk about it. There was an article, which I have a link in the description, you can read it, where they did a study and apparently because of the parking, people are, uh, it's costing drivers $4,600 a year. And I, you know, if that's three hours a week, it takes you extra to find parking. That's about right. If you make $30 an hour, which would be 57 cents a mile, which would be uh, 50 cents a mile, right? For that's 30 an hour, three hours a week that you lose from that is 90 bucks a week, that's $4,600. You know, just because we can't find parking. Currently, the only solution is paid parking. By the time we wait for the government to build parking spots, we'll all be retired out of here. Uh, you shut down in Southern Oklahoma today for that? Hmm. Waiting to hear from the home office, calling the FMCSA and Andy to file a complaint. Yeah, that's not a bad idea too, Amanda. Uh, you know, let the government know that these places are not complying with the law. I had to, that's a good idea. Lisa Truck, when something goes wrong, just leave it. Bottom Bunk, Sierra England. That is just the greatest name. I don't know if I would have that. It's supposed to be on my 34. Still got 11 hours. Gain 11 at midnight. I said, let's roll. People think, uh, and I'm not saying you, but people think that you have to take a 34-hour break. You don't. It isn't a requirement. It's only an option. So if you want to roll along on, uh, you know, recaps, no problem. Uh, let's see. Okay, you have a pack R. What do you think about it? Right, a pacer. The MX-13 is not ready for prime time. I think 15 liters, I guess, from driving all the years, right, that I think that's what I would be in. Uh, Arkansas is clear. That's better than it was, what, yesterday? You move from Western Express to Crete. I only recommend Western to people that have problems because they will put you in a truck if you have more recent felonies and that kind of thing. But otherwise, Western, oh, my gosh, forget it. You're probably doing way better at Crete and much happier. Job security when the white gold flies. Yeah, anytime towing, you want the bad winters. and you're uh, So you're in the best state for it. And, of course, Ben and Jerry's right there. No services other than uh, severance other than vac vacation and personal time already earned. Right. That's all. That's all. A lot of places. Some places you won't even get that. They won't give you that. You don't see how some can pay forty six hundred. Well, what the article is saying about parking is that because of the time wasted and the miles that you drive without getting paid, that you're basically losing forty six hundred dollars that you could otherwise make. So it's basically costing you forty six hundred dollars out of your check, not in actual cost, although there is some of that, but in costs that you would have made because of the drive time you lose trying to drive around in nine different places and find parking. And we, in Indiana, they've been putting these signs up for the rest areas now. And so I've been checking them. They're not even close. It says 12 spots left. The thing is packed full. So I wouldn't, they're brand new too. I wouldn't rely on those signs. Uh, 56 Ace Trucker, what's up uh, on I-30 to Cheyenne? How's it going up there? Better than here, probably. Uh, I bet I won't accept anything less than a dollar a mile. Yeah, as a company driver, dollar a mile. That would be the way to go. But look, you shouldn't get you should get closer to two if you're gonna own the truck, I think. Does anyone know if Sierra England does a hair fog test? I don't know, and I never ask places anymore. You should be able to pass it, certainly. Seems like the low paying companies do it. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, be careful so scrap companies don't team up and ambush me. I'll, I have some uh, backup coming to the uh, truck show. That's going to be, uh, I got a posse will be around me. <laughs> and I want to, yes, exactly. Because look, you should be able to pass any test. If you're concerned about it, uh, I would wait until you're not concerned about it. Yes, anytime towing. What is that? Is that the greatest name somebody has up there? It's at the bottom of a three-tier. Ha! No, you know, the two bunks on top kind of face each other. You two get to commiserate with each other. What do people think of CRSP? Is that, hopefully, that's not CRST. Uh, the 2000, in 2010, you got a 2010 Coronado. Wow, yeah, nice. Wow, with a 500 DD15, a 13, man. It lost three fuel pumps, two radiators. Yeah, but look, that's a nice truck. Come on. <laughs> don't need to worry about the parking issue the world's going to end in 12 years yikes well, we can just run off the end of it since it's flat illinois from missouri is clear but cold looks like the roads cleared up uh today but last night we we're getting all kinds of alerts and everything it was it wasn't any good hey uh europe is still watching all right 
Thanks for popping in here, Europe. 700,000 miles on years, no problems. That's what some of them work, right? James, yeah, CRST, look, that's don't go there. Look, that's what I'm saying right now. Do not, just go online. Go back, go on YouTube, look at the reviews. Go online, look at the reviews of the place, and then please make a different choice before you head out there. Oh, Ben and Jerry's is five minutes from one of your yards. You're over it. It's cheaper to buy Ben and Jerry's in every state. Yeah, but you get to get the Vermonster there, which we can't get. Marco, what's happening? Huge parking problems in Europe as well. What is the solution there? Is there any paid parking in Europe, and how much does it cost? That's interesting. Indiana is speed trap country. Yeah, because of our split speed limit. So you can't roll with traffic because traffic rolls faster than you. Amy, thank you. Have a good day for you. Finding parking earns a few points that loves faster. Okay. Uh, can you use your points to pay for parking? That's an interesting question. On a drop lot stop because of the trucks moving, stopped atop a pothole, couldn't move you engaged. At least you could at least you have the second axle that runs. Some trucks have a, a dead axle there. When is when am I gonna start doing food reviews of the iron skillet? <laughs> yeah, when they send me food review coupons. Look, I like the uh, skill at Petros. That could be uh, truckinganswersfood.com. <laughs> 2001 monolithic, yes. Uh, you should be able to pass any test that they give you. What do I think of doing away with the half-hour break? I love doing away with the half-hour break. I think it cut everybody's pay, but you kept the same amount of time, but cut your pay, I don't like it. And the three extra hours on the 14, I don't like three extra hours because... Companies are going to use that time to have you sit at a warehouse or loading and uh, you won't get paid for it. So, no, I don't like that at all. Uh, Mad Maldi, but the truck show, you 6 two, 300 All right. Well, that's what I want to see. I'll need you there. Marco, exactly right. CRST and England. England may be even worse, right? The best company under two years, that's almost anywhere, right? Depending where you live, right? Call, uh, you know, call Bar None. Give them a call. There's tons of places out there that I'm finding. Uh, heading out of sunny Florida. Why would you head out of Florida? At least you got a load out of there. Trunk companies make fake positive reviews. They do. They can make a fake positive review, but they're, these large places like CRST in England, there's so many reviews, they can't overcome all the reviews that are out there. So there's tons of information about CRST. Just drove from uh, Minnesota at minus 8 to, to Laredo, 81. Yikes. My grandmother would say, you're going to get a cold in that kind of weather. And I would say, you don't get a cold from the temperature. And then she'd burn me with her cigarettes. <laughs> uh, if you, uh, Kenworth Ryder, you read an article that said if you want to solve the parking problem, uh, pay for it. I think that's the current solution because if the parking is paid, uh, truck stops will be more enticed to build more parking. Now, is that a great solution? No, it isn't. And there's gonna be a lot of people mad about it. It's the current solution, though. The, I, I haven't heard anybody give a better one. We want the government to build rest areas. I agree, they should. I-69 from Evansville to Bloomington, there's no rest areas. There's all kinds of open space. They could have built a thousand spots, but they didn't. Okay, so you can use your points for parking. So that would be good. If you could build up your points, you'd be all right. How to get a job and where in California? Well, Dot Foods, as I found out last week, uh, would be a good place in California. Trying to find information about companies and numbers for ice road trucking. Just Google that up, ice road. What was that uh, name of that place? I've, it's like forgot it. Now, other than uh, Hughes Place, the other place, Carlisle. Carlisle. All Loves is all free parking. I haven't seen one that pays, but I haven't been to every Loves. Uh, don't buy the Jaguar. We'll be sorry. Look, that Jaguar that I was looking at is uh, 70 or 100,000 Jaguar, no deductible warranty. So... There you go. It's a certified car. Thanks for the James. Thanks for the support. I wasn't asking because of drugs. Yeah, right. I was asking because the misinformation people like me keep putting out there. Yes, all the misinformation I'm putting out about hair follicle tests. Exactly. You should be able to pass it. Is LTI a company a good one? I haven't looked into them. What do people think about that? 
anytime towing is a Petro fan and uh, their iron scale is better. I agree. I think that's probably the best food going at a large place, certainly. And you can use your points to uh, feed your face in there. Uh, you don't like driving big rigs. You're going to hot shot a pickup truck. All right. You could head over to Jay tomorrow at um, Auto Transport Intel at 8 p.m. Central. He'll be live here on YouTube. He does a lot of stuff with that, and he could give some good information about that. Uh, they need to be done away with the 14. That's part of the problem. Here's the other problem. How many hours do you want to work every day? If they do away with the 14, how many hours do you want to work? Because that holds companies to not dispatching you longer than that. <laughs> Jags don't pull trailers very good. That's correct. <laughs> Use nacho toppings on pizza. Yikes. What is line haul? Line haul would be something like, um, you know, consolidated, uh, consolidated, yellow, where you take a trailer uh, terminal to terminal. That's They do a lot of line haul that way. That's a lot of that is local stuff where you're out and back some generally. First live video. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate you being here. 2001 likes the iron skillet. I think they're the best of the large chains. Uh, Matt, Matt, what's up? It's looking nice in California. When does it not look nice in California? Uh, you wonder if you're the only driver that bought a full-size Gladiator helmet. Did you see those in there? I commented to her the other day. I go, now I know where to get this, uh, you know, <laughs> medieval helmet. <laughs> and so, do you wear it? You should wear it around in there since they sell them. Sergeant Sparky, yikes. De demerits for that. But thanks for coming in. Maybe the FMCSA will make their announcement at the truck show. That's what I'm thinking. Is that why they said the end of March? That's what I'm hoping as well. Uh, you have no problem with paid parking as long as the company pays for it, but that's not going to happen. Some companies do pay for it. It's in their ads. They're like, we pay for parking and stuff like that. So absolutely, it's their truck. They should pay for it. I agree. Because it can run you know, $100 or more a week if you pay it every night. CRST made the company drivers take a bias survey that would like be like, do you like dispatch or do you like the maintenance department? Huh, that's What, do they post that somewhere? I've never seen them post it. I wonder what they do with it. You don't like to eat from the iron skillet because the plate is an iron skillet. Yeah, it is. I, yeah, they have these tons of these iron pots and stuff they serve you in. Michael Young's company pays for parking. I've seen a lot of them uh, advertise that we pay for parking, that kind of thing. As far as I know, you would be able to tax deduct it if you itemized at the end of the year, even as a company driver, if you had enough of it. So there's also that. That's not the greatest. I mean, they should pay for it, but there's that as well. Pam has Driver Solutions to promote their BS. That's correct. The Driver Solutions campus is shared with Pam. They are the same. Yes, Driver Solutions is their trucking uh, school company of Pam. Totally agree. Right. The fish at Pilot was not good. Look, it's caught fresh every year for them they keep it in their freezer you're not look you're not it's not you know the freshest stuff but it's probably the best of the ones that are out there that's what i'm th saying uh do i like truck stop food well i would like the iron skillet is the best sit down restaurants i like certainly i don't think the loves has a very good selection of hot food though uh the ice road trucker from the tv show will beat the truck show next month which one is coming to the truck show uh, I prefer to Flying J. They have more parking. They had better uh, phones, if you remember that years ago. The phone booths at the J. You would park in there to make a phone call. Hey, what's going on, Todd? How's it going over there? It's going great here. Had to chain up for the first time in Washington. Boy, that was a huge backup last week. Truck after truck kept getting stuck. Those guys should have been ticketed out their butt. If the signs are up, you cannot continue to go without chains, all right? If you don't know how to chain, there's always somebody on the CB that'll chain you up. Otherwise, you got to park. And a lot of companies uh, will sell you to park, and I think you should park anyway. But if you're out there, you need to chain if you ha if the signs are up. You can't just go. Google Maps has helped you finding the odd parking spot. Oh, be <laughs> you park behind a coal, so you find all these weird... Uh, single spot somewhere that's not a bad idea either and i uh which i do a blog if you don't know uh i write a blog a couple times a week two three times a week and i wrote out today about you know doing a dedicated route that 
that wouldn't be a bad solution right now. Of course, local, you wouldn't need parking. But if you did a dedicated route where you did the same thing every day, you can then figure out your parking. I think that would help a lot. Uh, the 29 Casino Coachella is the best for parking. Oh, well, they casinos have good food, yes. Uh, Jonathan wants to go back to eight hours off instead of 10. Then uh, those two hours better be paid and not two hours of sitting around at a dock somewhere. What do I do for work? Uh, I drive a semi, same as everybody else. This is uh, getting close to 31 years now. Uh, Island Trucker, uh, even with the 14, you can work 24 hours a day. You just have to take a 10 hour before you can drive again. Yeah, it's, as long as you get your time off, you can drive. It only limits your drive time, of course. Uh, the nicest is in California, is not going there. Nobody wants to go there, but the weather's so good, you almost have to in the wintertime. You are taking out the trash. Look, I think we should all go in and buy those helmets and walk around the loves with those helmets on. Have you seen those helmets? It's, why is the truck stop selling these helmets? I was like, what the heck? So they email the service to, to the employees for CRST. I wonder what they do with it. They're not posted anywhere that I've ever seen. You can't access them. So uh, they must just be internal. And Nick, thank you for coming here. What's going on? FCC pays for parking. They reimburse you on your check. Good. You know, they should. it should work on ComData. It should go on your card. That'd be a good way to do it. Let them pay up front. But that's at least they're paying for it. Uh, five stars for any questionnaire from a company. Maybe you get a gold star in their driver profile. Yeah, you know, I, you should fill them out, honestly, and you should put your name on it. Okay, any survey you fill out, you shouldn't be afraid to put your name on if you're afraid at any company to do a survey and not put your name on it, don't work there. Always back up what you say. Don't fill out anonymous. So here's my anonymous thing, right? Tell them what you think. What am I think of today's owner operator market? Well, that's a problem for owner operators, right? That is the joy of running your own business. GSXR likes the huddle house. You can't get parking in a lot of huddle houses, though. A lot of truck stop food is trash. That is true. 20% of freight is in and out of California. There's so many people. Their uh, rates are good, too. And so the weather is good. So you almost have to go there, right? What happened to the Detroiter truck stop? Yeah, that Detroiter, which was a dump all the time, is a chain now. And you, you had to pay. That was one of the first places that was a pay lot where you had to pay to get in the lot. You had two hours uh, or whatever, and it still is. So... Fremont pays for parking and reimbursement. That's good. Not surprised. California is like its own country. They could break off and be their own country. No signs were up when there's nowhere to park, and they decided not to plow a state route. I love it. Right. You got paid 380 uh, You got paid uh, on shutdown weather pay. That's good. If you have to shut down because of change or weather, you should get some kind of compensation. The iron skip it, filthy. It depends which one it is, right? We saw a waitress using dirty water to grab a driver's plate. That's but that's not them, right? That's that sir, that's that single place. Use trucker path. I've heard of it. I've never used it because I don't know how accurate it would be for parking. The law says you have to carry chains. Yes, in the states that you carry them. That's correct. You're not required to wear them. That's why they can't ticket you. There are chain laws that go up and say chains required. Then you uh then you need your chains to continue. Uh, what do I think about companies that micromanage your drivers? I think it's horrible, and I think the drivers probably don't like working there when they micromanage. That's why you hire a professional. You don't need to micromanage them. Let them do their job. Uh, they sell the helmets for the role players. Is there a li LARP live-action role-playing going on like in the parking lot of Loves? <laughs> Holy mackerel. Monica, what is happening? I got to go to these loves where these things are going on. Uh, you like checking out the odd things that love sells. It's the weirdest thing I ever saw in there. Uh, everyone has an eye of zero on crystal sword. <laughs> so there's swords too? Uh, Mad Maldi. Okay, so you do pay it on com data. So that's perfect. That's the way it should work. Should I go to Swift for the school? Well, it'd be better than CRST school. 
I'll park on a ramp before I pay for parking. In some states, you can get a large fine for that. So it depends, right? Here, it's actually a $500 fine. I think they said it was 500 in Indiana. They've rarely enforced it, okay? It's not enforced much, but they can ticket you for it. Prime's rule is if you chain up, have to chain up, you need to pull over. I agree. That's a lot of companies, and uh, that's how it should be, certainly. But some of these drivers, which was last week, went past the signs and just continued on and then got stuck, and there were huge backups. And so those drivers should certainly ha get some kind of you know, repercussions from that. Uh, accident tanker rolled over and set a fire. I use this jug handle every day. Do you think he was going too fast? I don't know. I don't know anything about the accident. You do have to be careful with him. Yeah, auto transport intel at J. Oh, CTS, right. Uh, CTS business coaching as well over there. Jay will have all that information at 8 p.m. live tomorrow at Central Time. Not saying uh, don't chain up, just follow up on your ticket comment. Yeah, okay, right. If the sign's up, you need to chain up. Can I make more with a smaller company? It depends. See, I'm odd in that, that I'm not a huge fan of smaller companies, although many, many drivers like them. Here's my thought on it. Large company, they don't know your name, right? Because I don't care if they know my name. And you get better benefits. Some person that's got five trucks is not going to have the benefits of a large company company so it just depends there's more options at a large company also and a small company depending on their size you're going to do more loading and unloading which wastes time i think drop and hook on the road certainly also saves a lot of time and that makes you more money it depends though what if you want the boss to know who you are in that then maybe the small place is better for you <laughs> the, um, the detroiter was a dive yeah it still is Jeffrey, what's happening out there, Mr. Herring? Hey, Todd, right? Waffle House, look, we love these places, but they don't have truck parking. Have I tried the Catscale app on the phone? No. It's nice. You can set it up on your fuel card, and I've heard that, though. That's how it should be. I always wondered, even many years ago, why doesn't the receipt print out on the... Why can't you credit card it, you know, and get a receipt on the spot? So now you don't have to go in, and I've heard that, and that's way better then driving around and drive if once you pay it ought to give you the numbers second accident fellow went into the wrong lane off the turnpike hit and passed away but driver of it was fine that's a shame that's a shame you live in michigan anything with detroit and it has to be a dump yeah you know detroiter in the Mich in the detroit area is the only place that actually has people in it and it's not boarded up and it probably should be you wish you had Chinese food at truck stops. I don't know how delicious that would be. Per diem as a tax write-off. Uh, when did this happen? Okay, no more per diem for company drivers starting January of 17. So the 2017 tax year, which we'll be filing or have already filed, no per diem for company drivers. They doubled your standard deduction, but company drivers can no longer deduct per diem. Companies can still pay it to you. That's totally legal. No problem, but you can't deduct it anymore like we used to. So people are going to be uh, getting more and more upset about that as we go into the tax season and people start filing. Do I know if there will be a government grant for unemployed people to pay for the truck school? Uh, yeah, it depends on the state. They keep changing it. Everybody in your state, wherever you are, if you want to go to truck school, that's the first thing you should do. Get a hold of your Department of Unemployment and see if they'll pay for truck school. You might get it, and you don't even have to be unemployed in a lot of states. They'll pay for all or most of it in a lot of states. They have grants. So, yeah, absolutely. JCT has an exit survey when you leave. Nice of them. Ask if you've ever think about coming back. The one should be, have you considered joining any lawsuit against us? Main reason I left no money, not buying out their uh, fleet spec truck. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if that's one of their questions. Uh, will you be suing us in the future? How about the concealed weapon law for truck drivers? I've always said that is a problem. It's probably mostly owner operators. Most companies that I've heard of or worked at say no weapons in their trucks. So you have that issue as well. It's a risk that you would take. I mean, they get nervous at a lot of places if you have too big of a knife with you. Uh, you've never been able to eat a Petro without getting sick. Well, the good thing is the Petro has a large store. You can buy... Uh, all your pharmacy supplies for that spotlight 29 is great 
Uh, you like Morongo on the west side of Palm Springs, just for the uh, weather. I would go there with you. Should I go to Swift or Knight? Uh, are they different? I don't think they have much difference now that they're like friends. Kangaroo Trucker, hey, what's going on? Does that mean you're from a different country? I guess you're from the same country that you're from. You use Trucker Path and it's 90% right. That's good. But, you know, we don't want that 10%, but, you know, for being an app, that's pretty good. Does it cost anything? Uh, 173 Songwriter, got to go. <laughs> Filling out an application, New England Motor Freight. Oh, okay. Enjoy that. Uh, one tip, get your um, sign-on bonus up front, which they still are offering. As of yesterday, I looked on their site. They're still hiring. Love it. Uh, they do have live action role play at the fuel pump. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck with the helmets? They're like, who's the buyer at Loves that says, oh, we need to buy these helmets? Your opinion of local work and getting paid hourly? Well, getting paid hourly for everybody, I think, is certainly the best way to go. And uh, as uh, I make weird noises, but everybody should get paid hourly. I found a few road jobs even that pay hourly plus overtime. At least you get paid for all your time. And local, you're home every day. So uh, if that's something that you're interested in, go for it, right? You got $200 in layover when I-80 shut down. That is really good. I mean, place paying you for shutdowns like that, there are drivers that are doing work that aren't getting paid. Can't have a gun, but you can have a sword, and that sword would go with the helmet then. Uh, you like the states that promote pulling over anywhere when you're tired. Utah, right, has that on I-80. Hey, if you're tired, why don't you pull over right here? They should, you know, they want you to stop when you're tired and then there's nowhere for you to park. The thing is, what is it going to be 20 years before they even start probably building any more spots? The government is not going to fix it. They're just not. Pay by mileage or percentage. Well, I've always said that I think mileage is better. And then all the uh, angry emails come in about percentage. Here with the rates going down, as a trucker coach has been talking about lately, if you're on percentage, you're actually getting less and less each week. So it's a real problem. At least on mileage, you know what you're going to get. I like the certainty of knowing rather than running the percentage. Can you make more on percentage? Certainly. But I have no control over how much the company takes on a load either. So I'm just not a fan. For me, I'm not a fan. But it works for a lot of people. They It does work for people, just not me. Trucker path is accurate but does have tolls that say lots are full when they are not. A trolls. Oh, yeah. Okay. I should say trolls. That is, uh, <laughs> anytime you do anything on the internet, and I'll tell you this personally, right? There's always trolls that say stuff or try to mess it up or whatever. So when you let anybody into that to comment on an app, you're just, it's not going to be a hundred percent because of trolls. Is a rail a good starter company? Yeah. They pay you while you are training. So, uh, absolutely give them a call. Your company has five trucks and you don't have benefits, but we have the best trucks and make enough money to get our own benefits. Look, if you uh, make enough where you can buy the benefits you would get and still come out ahead, okay, then it's still worth it. They're basically giving you the benefits by paying you. You know, that's the thing. You probably don't get the same benefits. You know, I'm talking about vacation, holidays, you know, paid uh, personal days, life insurance, all the benefits of a really large company that it would be tough to probably get above that. But maybe they pay you enough for it. Whatever works, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. I think everybody should have health insurance. It's, you know, kind of irresponsible to not have it because if you go in the hospital with some huge thing, you know, you can come out with a $50,000 bill. Who's going to pay that? So, but it, look, if that works for you, uh, you know, then it works. I just, five trucks, the boss going to know who I am. Here they have no idea who I am. I just sneak in and sneak out. They never know. What do I think about an owner operator doing local? I do I think it's possibly successful? Yeah, there's Hub Group runs these containers. It's uh, they're running ads. It says home every day, five hundred dollars a day or something like that. So uh, can they be successful? Absolutely. Oh, Mad Mally agrees that app works great. That's interesting. Uh, Cindy has twelve drivers, small company, and all dropping. Huh? Oh, so your company has uh, worked into some deal where they get a drop and hook so you have the best of uh, both worlds because that drop and hook how much money do you make extra by dropping and hooking a lot and i don't mean the drop and hook pay 
I mean, you get to make money because you're not sitting around getting unloaded and loaded every day. That is where the money is. So I think that's really great. Kangaroo Trucker is at night CDL school, so you are here, all right? You pay for your hotel, that's correct, and your transportation there, right? But they give a great rate, 57 to 175 From what I understand, though, you can arrange, isn't there a thing at night where they pay for it and then you can pay it back, right? Isn't there some kind of deal? Not a contract, I know. But if you can't pay for it, they uh, they you pay it back to them, I think. Uh, Jonathan is leased to a small company. It works better. They have only seven trucks. There's pros and cons. Yeah, seven trucks. It can be a freight problem, but it depends. A lot of people, oh, the, I'll get tons of letters. Oh, I met a small company and I love it. And look, and if that works for you, there's a lot of different things to do in trucking. Uh, for me, because I want the benefits and stuff from a larger place, it just probably wouldn't work for me. Uh, per diem, right. Okay, so per diem, I've not been a fan of per diem because a lot of companies charge for it. So example, you're making 40 cents a mile. They'll give you, say, 10 cents uh, per diem and pay you 28 cents a mile. So they charge two cents for it. So no way. And uh, I have a video about it as well, which I can't link in here yet. But uh, the way it comes out at the end of the year, they're saving a lot of money and you're t giving up a lot. If you're injured, you get less on workman's comp. If uh, you get fired, you get less on unemployment. You know, So there's a lot of things that they're saving on. They don't have to pay into that. And so I'm just not a big fan of it. I'd rather just get paid. That's you got your license through your state, Kenneth. So did they pay for the whole thing? Uh, is per diem worth it if there's a cost to it? No, I don't think so at all. It isn't fair of them to charge you for it. They save money. They always say it costs them. They save tons of money on it. They should not charge you for it. The state of Georgia pays for school if you live in Georgia for a year. There's one way to do it. So free truck school. Then you get a choice to go anywhere you want to go. Chinese fast food has the cheapest, lowest quality. Well, uh, notice all those signs out have a yellow background. All menus have the same number, say 9, say 13. Isn't that uh, that's some kind of thing in the culture there? I don't know. And I look, I like Chinese food. So if you're hungry, you're going to eat anywhere. You'll improvise and stick this. <laughs> exactly. You pay one cent amount to receive per diem. I'm not a fan of that. That's a thousand bucks a year at a hundred thousand miles. You're giving up a grand, you know, as some kind of administrative fee to them. I don't like it. They shouldn't. Uh, they shouldn't charge you for it. At least if you're going to get it, it should be the same pay. You don't claim per diem as taxable. That's correct. There's no tax on the per diem. You're taxed only on the amount that you're paid. So in my example, twenty eight cents. Also, then if you go to get a loan, some places say. Oh, well, you're only getting $560 a week instead of $1,000 a week because the per diem reduces your taxable income. Uh, you're on I-80 about to freeze and can't feel your feet. Where is it that cold? I think you can can uh, carry cans of bear spray. Yeah, you could carry uh, pepper spray, that kind of thing. You could. There is the problem with company paid per diem. They don't pay Social Security tax on it. That's correct. That shorts your near retirement. That's correct. No Social Security tax on that because it is an income. So if you're on it long enough, you also short yourself on that. If you were to die for a, you know for whatever reason, your spouse or whatever would only claim the Social Security on what you had. I mean, it's overall, it reduces a lot of things that people think they'll never need, but you could need, and it just saves them money. I don't like it. Give me a reason to finish my three months at Schneider you're about to explode. Well, it's only three months. So do they do they prorate it? You know, I mean, 90 days is not terrible. It's going to take you a couple weeks to get started somewhere else. That's only three months. You know, see that light at the end of the tunnel, the light. Trucker path allows you to see if the chicken house is open. Oh, that's nice. How is, how is that updated? Is that crowdsourced like Waze? I got to look more into this. A lot of accidents coming out of Las Vegas, going to California early this morning because of the snow and ice in Vegas. Crazy. Trucker Path is free. All right. They also list things as truck stops. Okay.
Club CSA budget to pay for parking, it would take forever to uh, to build it, right? Why are rates going down if there's a demand for a fuel and cost seems low? It's, it's a disaster, isn't it? And so people on percentage are having a problem. Now, I don't follow the rates that much because I'm a company driver. I would probably send people to Trucker Coach for that who does that in-depth of uh, that kind of thing. And he goes alive a lot as well. Uh, they're waiting for driverless trucks. They're going to wait a long time, decades. Comfortable, man. What's happening? Good afternoon out there. Oh, the M M uh, Hawk uh, just subscribed. Love your vids. I'm the king of the road. I appreciate that very much. Trust you percentage is better. People tell me that. You can make more. You can also make less. Uh, Franciscus likes the live feeds. I appreciate that. I'm live every Monday at 1 for people that don't know it. 1 p.m. Eastern time for people around the world. Check your GMT clock to see. That's a plus 5 GMT. Uh, GMT is plus 5 of this, right? How do I feel about FedEx ground? As long as you're not 1099, I'm in. If you are if you are personally 1099, I'm not in. Why would we want the government controlling parking shortage when they screwed everything else up? Yeah. You know, people scream at the government uh, the, how terrible it is, and then they're like, hey, government, fix the parking. It can't, you can't have it both ways. We cannot have that both ways. I, I have yet to find a different solution that's better than paid parking because paid parking at least gets people to build parking lots. It isn't a good solution, though. People on Trucker Path think it's funny to say a way station is closed. Yeah, I mean, I think we're right about trolls on there. Uh, you pay 143 a month and you're close to 50. I don't need medical benefits. Well, you never know if you'll need medical benefits. Um, my dad one day went in the hospital for a quadruple bypass and, he, you know, he seemed fine. So that it's it's kind of like car insurance, to, the, I think. You never know if you'll need it. 143 is really low. It's probably not, uh, you know, a high-end benefit. My benefit, if I was to buy the benefits I have through the company, because I've looked at you know, how much would it be in the open market? They're like $1,500 a month. So it depends. Trucking companies are the ones that screwed it up. Uh, they they don't help the solution, certainly. You know, they should build their own. All you large companies should build more parking places for your own trucks. Because the government is going to regulate the industry to the point that making it safe parking becomes a problem. And then they need to supply parking. That's interesting. The government could supply paid parking. You know, what about that? What about a large place, England, all these large companies that are huge, they ought to build their own spots along the highway. They could rent lots and it could only be their trucks in there, of course, and they would solve the parking problem for their own companies. I think a company that did that, that said, oh, well, we have 150 lots around the country, you know, and here's a map of them. So when you come and work here, you're going to have parking in a lot of places. I think that would be a good way to recruit drivers. Company drivers can pay more for drivers. They just don't. Yeah, especially where your namesake is there. And, uh, you know, I'm not giving you grief for it because you don't control their pay. But, I mean, holy mackerel. I mean, had this driver ride in at 29 cents at England? Come on, man. I haven't made that. I can't remember when I last made that. I started out at a quarter. Uh, rail is near you. Go down to hit 75. Even at the speed limit, they'll fire you. How do they know your speed? Well, the trucks transmit the speed back. Mine does the same thing. We get in trouble at 13 over the posted limit. That's where we get in trouble. So uh, it depends if there's, look, if that's their policy and you know it up front, you know, then you know it up front, I guess. I think you should be able to roll to 75 if the speed limit is that. And I think our policy is good where it's 13 over the posted limit. That's how, and it sends a message back to the truck or to the to the company and then you'll hear about it. Hey, what are you doing here? So, you know, that's a good way. But if it's 75, then I guess that's their weird policy. I've seen people do that. Look, they're going down a hill and they hit the brakes. I'm like, why would a company want their trucks to hit the brakes downhill when they're getting this free, you know, this free momentum, but that's what they do. You run local out of the ports, Travis, and uh, make it pay extra for going on the ports. Good. And a good fuel surcharge. Good. Are you local there? Okay, you run local. So you can be local and make money. Unloading at these warehouses all the time. Only warehouses in the area, no houses, and they still won't let you park. Is that crazy? 
park on the side of the road. They put big rocks to make sure you can't park there. But there's nobody there. What do they care? What do they care? Ports of LA and Long Beach are closed today. Union slugs getting paid. I get a day off, but unpaid. Oh, well, you're, I'm sure, I thought your people could arrange something to make people come in there. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know it was a paid day for them. It is uh, President's Day, right? Washington's birthday. It's Sunday. I have to work today, so. Uh, you can have your CDL school at night payroll deducted. That's what I thought. They would take it out of your check. Then when you're done paying it off, they turn around and payroll deposit you back over several weeks. That's what I thought. Uh -huh. That's how I thought it worked. Swift and Knight don't have a contract per se. So if you could go there and pay the pay for the um, motel and your transportation there, it's basically free. So you're paying for this extra stuff that they then payroll deduct. It's not the worst deal in the world. I will tell you that. It isn't. Uh, Mike, all you need is major medical. It depends on, you know, what your problems are, I guess. Uh, it's not, it's hot. So whoever's tracking these little things will know every time you don't wear a seatbelt. Uh, yeah, it probably does. There's no reason it couldn't transmit that information back. I don't know if it's still in effect. I went to schooling during the economic meltdown. Uh, state would pay for schooling. Right, Kenneth. Um, everybody needs to call their state. These programs change all the time. So if you want to go to truck school, call your state first. They change sometimes day to day. It Today, the tomorrow could be different. Call the Department of Unemployment in your state and say, look, I want to go to truck school. What are the grants? What are the programs? There's some bureaucrat there just waiting to take your call. Who? That's all they do all day is click on the computer. Roll says they pay 100 a day during training. Rail, yes, they pay you during training. There's not been that many places that do that. Okay, Monica says Florida pays the full grant. That's another state now then. So in Florida, go for no charge. Chinese restaurants are happy, wonderful, and golden. Delicious. I've only, you can carry a flare gun. Oh, that'd be interesting. But you'd have limited uh, shots in that where you'd be better off with a pepper spray, bear spray kind of thing. <laughs> because <laughs> I could see a walk between two trailers and somebody's coming the other way at you and you pull out this flare gun. I mean, <laughs> that'd really be pretty dramatic. That'd be really dramatic. Pepper spray is not allowed in Europe. What, they don't allow pepper spray in Europe? Oh, what about bear spray? I mean, around here we do have, you could park an area where there actually are bears here in the United States. So forget pepper spray. The new thing is hornet spray that goes 20 feet. This bear spray, it sprays pretty far. Let me tell you that. It sprays far too. And hornet spray, boy, that'd be uh, that'd be something in your eyes. But I don't know if that would, uh, I don't know how that would affect people if it didn't get in their eyes. I think bear spray might work better. Kangaroo trucker, thank you very much. I appreciate that. When the Qualcomm starts whining because you're coasting too fast, you'll get a safety alarm that trips like a G-sensor. Hit the brakes. Yeah, they shouldn't do that. If the speed limit is 75, you should be able to roll along, you know, with the rest of the traffic. Why are they giving you grief about going the speed limit? What do they care? It's free fuel. I mean, it helps them. Uh, don't do 75, the truck freak. That's not good. Hey, thanks, Kangaroo Trucker, but uh, thanks for coming here, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. There's no bears. Okay, so in Europe, there's no European bears? <laughs> that doesn't make any yet. Uh, you know, are there hornets? Maybe you could have hornet spray. Mike, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Paintball guns are not considered firearms. They're markers. Oh, so could you have a paintball gun? Now, that'd be better than the flare gun. Why? Because steer tires are only rated to 75. It's an insurance liability. See our company policy to relieve company liability. My question is, you can limit the speed. Oh, so the steers are, I thought steers, personally, I thought steers were 85. If steers are 75, all right, then I could see them holding you 75, even if the speed limit is. I'll tell you this, I've gone faster than 75 years ago in a truck at a place called Coast Dispatch, that truck would go 88, and we would regularly roll along at that speed. So uh, what? how about that? Hillbilly in Philly, thank you very much. I appreciate it today. So uh, Ivona, what do you say about 88 and a 75? Is that marked on the tire? Do I not know this? I'm going to go check it out. You're on a hazmat load from Texas to California, but leveled to inspected two times. 
if you're passing and they put that sticker on the windshield, they're not supposed to uh, inspect you. Again, I should do a review of a garden or trucking. You can't make the truck break at 75. I'll bet they can. They probably can. If it can break when there's a car in front of you in distance, there's no reason it couldn't uh, turn itself, hit the brakes, or turn the jakes on. Absolutely, there's no reason they couldn't do it. As for paid parking, I think truck companies should set up a deal with truck stops, just like lumpers, and get uh, comm checks for paid parking. That's not bad. They could rent some spots out of the truck stop. I bet truck stops would be open to that, would be open to it. Uh, some comp trucking companies care about overspeed due to the insurance. I could see that happening. But a lot of these large places, like rail, I bet, is self-insured. Recaps are rated to 55. Oh, I don't know about that. We run uh, trailer recaps here. And uh, our speed is 65. Rail State's owner founder started the Class A and actually drove a tractor trailer. Where is he now? Is he dead? And so did the kids take over? I'm always worried about that kind of thing. Black powder revolvers are not considered to be a firearm. So you could have a, so you can carry a black powder. I wonder what the cops would think about that, though. If you actually, if they actually saw a black powder revolver in your truck, I mean, what is it considered? If it's not considered a firearm, good starter company in Chicago. Any place that's not paying ten ninety nine is that place a disaster? You know, rail is right around the corner in Gary, Indiana. So you can uh, just cruise down on the south side of the lake and start over there. And Schneider's down there, too. Because it takes forever to get anywhere around Philly. I like to deliver a pig and get out of those cities and park elsewhere. I totally agree. Your truck is limited to 52. Oh, how long does it take to get anywhere in Europe going 50 miles an hour? Okay, so the warranty is 75 unless you're running high profile. Okay. So, all right, I could see them limiting it for safety at 75 then and there's no reason that the truck couldn't turn the jakes on at least or hit the brakes at 75 certainly i would not like the brake coming on new jersey has a three minute idle rule do they even enforce that on the trucks with the uh idle compliance sticker all ours have that all tires have a speed rating yes i didn't think that 75 was the speed rating of a tire 88 and a 75 at 1.2 gigawatts yeah, I, we did comment that uh, it was funny that the trucks were limited to 88. It still had uh, time left. I mean, we were only rolling 1850 or so. I mean, it could have gone faster probably. Rail, rail has good low-cost health insurance. That's good. It's Here we go. It's a big place. So the benefits that are better cost less because it's spread out as well. They pay practical miles, yes. Uh, that's torture, yes. It is at... You're at 65, and that feels too slow out west. Right, but in Europe, the speed limits are lower. Each state is different concerning black powder. Well, that would be a real problem. I think it'd be a problem carrying a black powder pistol in a truck. And for sure, most, I would say 90% of companies would say no if you asked them about it. Stephen, happy President's Day to you. Uh, what is it your tractor trail driver had no shower for a week? Wouldn't that... Uh, deter an attack oh uh that <laughs> that could help and you'd save the shower money and you'd have all the showers saved up on there and so people would be like oh is that bear spray no it's just i haven't showered the student is calling a taxi at this moment true i'm a convicted could get uh a convicted felon could get one in some states carrying a black powder across state lines i think that I'm no lawyer, and I think that is an interesting question. You can you can also have a black powder pistol if you're a felon. So if you are a felon and could have it, then I guess you could have it in the truck. But I certainly am not recommending it without tons of research. And uh, don't wear it like uh, John Wayne or anything as you get out of the truck at the way station. What would the truck stop would probably not let you in if they saw it either. I took a ride with a friend 20 years ago on I-10 in Texas, and his truck was rolling at 95 miles an hour. So, some people can really roll out there. Okay, we could, and that Coast Dispatch I was on, I think they're closed now. That was Air Freight, and so that was a 13-speed uh, white GMC, and uh, we that truck went 88 miles an hour. And you could really make some time doing that. 
Uh, Prime, yes, doesn't Prime and most of the big companies roll at 62 so they don't have an issue with their trucks rolling slow? No, Prime has some kind of policy, which there are probably Prime drivers on here that can verify that. They want you to go slower. They encourage 58 miles an hour from what I understand at Prime. So they encourage you to go slow to save fuel because they do a lot of leasing and they want their lease payment is really high there compared to a lot of places. So they need, want the drivers to go slow so they can get, you know, nine and a half miles to the gallon. So it can look like they're making some kind of money. I think they go so slow that I think it's unsafe. Only a certain states allow felons to have black powder. So, I mean, so Western Express, you got to leave your gun at the state line. Black powder weapons are considered primitive weapons. You're just not going to cook off five rounds in 10 seconds. While a uh, black powder pistol, you could load it up and you got the few rounds and then reload it, right? My dad used to reenact the Civil War uh, many years ago and he had a black powder pistol, but you're right, the reload time is quite a while. You have to tell people, wait a minute, uh, I got to reload this. And 95 in his truck could be considered air freight as well. Yeah, that's super fast. I really thought the tires were in the mid 80s. Uh, oh, Cassius King carries a black powder in case you're challenged to a duel. Yes, because I next time I see you, I will slap you upon the face with my glove. And I have the box. You could choose your weapon. <laughs> choose your weapon. The real deterrent against attackers when you rip off your shirt. That's when it means business. Yeah, I wear Velcro uh, tank tops just for that purpose in the summertime. Believe me, when I do that, they go running away. And I don't know if it's because they're scared or uh, they want to burn their eyes out. What's your take on Prime? I heard good things and bad things. I'm no fan of Prime. They have Look, somebody just sent me, a driver sent me last week. They charge you a dollar a week to use the Com Data card. And you say, oh, that's not much. Well, that's 50 bucks a year out of your check for using the Com Data card. And this driver also, here's an interesting thing, and he sent me this stuff about it. There was some kind of load problem. He's a company driver, and the load moved over or something, and so some of it was damaged. Okay, but as a company driver, they can't charge you that for that. They can fire you, but they can't take it off of your check. They took it out of his check by putting a $7,000 advance on his check and then taking it out week by week. And so that way, if he complained to the state or whatever, they could say, he, they could say oh, well, this is an actual cash advance for him. It's just not right to do to people. The way that they treat people like that is that kind of thing, that kind of backhanded stuff, it isn't right. And so that that's another reason to not recommend the place. Why should I pay $52 a year to use your com data card to fuel your truck? And he sent me a check stub to prove that it's just a dollar charge. It's not part of the fueling. It's just a dollar charge. And although that isn't much, it doesn't matter. It's the point of, if they're going to do that, they're going to do all this other stuff too. Is there an upcoming strike? Yeah, there's going to be a strike in April. There'll be at least, I estimate 15 drivers are going to participate in it. So it should be a pretty radical out there. Uh, yeah, believe me, no, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, you started at Prime, good company, since the truck is slow. They go 65 from what people have told me. But they do pay a fuel bonus if a mile per gallon is above 7. Big deal. I get 8.2 now that it's winter. It's down to 8.2 lifetime in my truck going 65. Black powder, I think you're asking the DOT to shake you down. I think it could be a problem. If they find some kind of black powder, you're going to have to argue with somebody that it's not a weapon, you know, that it isn't a handgun. I wouldn't recommend it, personally. What do I knew about Pride in Utah? Rookie starting out, considering them to do regional. I don't know. What do you think about Prime? What's the deal? What are they offering you? Let's see about it that way, since I don't know anything about them. What is Pride offering you? Carry extra cylinders? You could. It's still a longer reload time, certainly. Uh, slowest trucks are Raider Express. That's that um, Texas company, if I remember. I'm not sure. Did your truck run hot? No. Uh, the truck going 88. No, it ran fine. Just rolling along, you know, 1850 and 13th at 88 miles an hour. Ran good. Uh, I believe in Virginia they have signs posted over 80 is considered reckless. Yeah, I'm sure that it wasn't. Uh, look, it was, you know, O'Hare to JFK. So was the speed limit that high? No. You know, across the Ohio Turnpike, were we cruising sometimes? Yes.
Okay, uh, true. That's a true story. Should you be going that fast? No, I mean that's really fast. But you could really get some work done then. Uh, I take sometimes forty-five minutes to go twelve miles. Yikes! That's when you need to be paid by the hour. Different tires have different speed ratings. Kind of like a car, right? And Stephen Brown challenges me to a duel. When I get to the truck show, you may slap me with your glove. <laughs> Just past Prime Driver going 58. That's about right. That's what they recommend to Prime. They recommend that they go 58. Prime is a fixed salary for three four months. Yes. While you're in training, they pay you a fixed rate. How about a bat with an electrified barbed wire like as a tire thumper? You know, a tire thumper makes a good weapon in a small space, and that's something that you can legit get away with you know, at a DOT inspection or something like that. You're going to have to really talk your way out of a black powder pistol where, you know, and a powder horn. What's this powder horn doing? In your you know, I don't know how you could explain that to him. I don't know about having black powder in the cab, too. How about that? Prime health insurance is high. Well, what is high? I'm, I'm finding, you know, two people to 100 to 200 a week seems to be about what is in the, um, in the trucking world. Uh, why don't I stop putting down? Look, I don't put owner operators down. If you want to be an owner operator, be my guest. I'm not one. And so I send people to Truckers Coach to, for more owner operator information. I don't have that much information about it, but it isn't for me. Growing up in the 80s, all unions were mafia controlled and did fold. Uh, a lot of them say they were, of course, but we have no evidence of that. They're just a social organization, you know? Looking forward to the podcast. Yes, I will have the podcast up very soon. When I meet your drivers, I tell them about my channel. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Spread the word, as they say. Uh, what's my take on Schneider? I think they have an interesting apprentice program that you should look into. Right now, there are people there that are going through Schneider training and have no contract and no charge at all for it. So, Schneider is running this apprentice thing. It's certainly worth looking at. It's almost as good as having the state pay for your truck school. Have I thought about setting up a table at the large truck show? I did. I thought, oh, I'm going to set up a table at Mid-America Truck Show. I'm going to have a table. And then, uh, I don't know if you've looked into it, it was like $1,000. And I thought, I'm not setting up a table at the truck show. So they're very, the tables there are very expensive because there's a lot of you know, 70, 80,000 people come in. So they really charge for it. So I probably will not be setting up a table at the truck show. I've only used as a hammer. That's a good way too. So a hammer also would be something that you could get past the DOT, right? Oh, it's just a hammer. No problem. I like uh, the tire billy because you, a lot of them have a handle on them where your hand won't slip off of it, where handles, you know, it's still a great weapon. Believe me. You can claw somebody to death, literally. What about Mayflower? I worked for United Van Lines for three days. <laughs> That's the extent of uh, North American Van Lines for three days. That's the extent of my household goods. I don't know that much about Mayflower. I know there would be a lot of loading and unloading. So that would be something that you'd have to be up for. But you should know that up front. Uh, bat with barbed wire. Yeah, what? You certainly... You wrap a bat with barbed wire then you're going to have a tough time passing it off at the DOT again, saying, oh, this is a tire thump. Well, you can't tire thump it with barbed wire on it. We want to have a good something good in the truck that you can also pass off that's legal that you can pass off to a DOT. Oh, this is a tire thumper, no problem, right? But the bar, where do you, how would you say about the barbed wire? Oh, I wrap my tire thumpers in razor wire. You, Roger Penske uh, only gets six to six and a half if you're loaded. That's really low, right? We're almost always 75,000 and can go, well, you have this climbing and lowering yourself as well in Indio. So six and a half, so you wouldn't get the the thing at prime. How fast does your truck go? So Mad Maldi pays 148 a week for you and your daughter. That's about the price that I'm finding. One to $200 a week uh, seems to be about the price. So you're right in the amount of money that people pay. Monica says knives. You get too long of a knife and uh, then you got a problem again. I do. I carry a knife with me all the time uh, on my belt. It's a Bear Grylls knife. How about that? Uh, but it's not that large of a knife. So, 
and I use it a lot. You can use it to do stuff with. And so once you get into the Rambo size knife, you have another problem with the DOT. You get out of there with this gigantic knife and you have a problem. It has to be something you can pass off to the DOT. Steven says no hazmat in the cab. I think that carrying the black powder horn in your cab, I mean, it would be placarded otherwise. So I guess because you don't have that much of it. Look, I'm just not a fan of uh, a black powder weapon in the truck. I think you're going to have a problem. Mad Melody, yeah, premium, of course. That is not, uh, that's not out of line for what I find. It isn't. Can, uh, slingshot makes a great deterrent or a bow and arrow. Well, here again, I don't, the slingshot you might get away with. It. I don't know how you're going to get away with a bow and arrow in the truck. How do you explain having a bow and arrow to somebody that chucks your truck? How about all truckers stop on the 12th and you can stop complaining? Uh, that won't do any good, of course. You'll just have the government put you back to work. How about drivers don't accept low pay? There's That's another solution. The only way a strike works is company by company. So you take one company. You pick a company. It doesn't matter what it is. Company X. They have a 1,000 trucks. And so you say, all right, on Monday, nobody at this company is going to work at noon. All the trucks park, and they have a spokesman. And they call the company and go, all your trucks are parked now. Let's talk. And so then they would have to raise your pay. They can't fire everybody that's 2,000 miles away from them because everybody just leaves the trucks everywhere. And then you go to the next one, company. And after you do a couple of companies like this, the rest of them will fold like cheap suits, as they say. And you go to the next one. Then the third company, you go, company C, guess what? You're next. And uh, right now, you can talk to us in advance and avoid all this problem. But having all the trucks stop, that won't do any good. One company at a time, with at the end of one week, you could get all this changed. Easy. Uh, if a tractor trailer rolls over a jackknife, does the trailer separate from the kingpin? Not necessarily. Anyone know of Tribe Express? I've seen them, you know. I thought I didn't never did a video about them, but I did look them up and thought, oh, this is not too bad here. I'm $54 a week. Is that one person? And that's not bad for a single person if it's good insurance. Mark for president? Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, have I watched Smart Trucking Channel on YouTube? I have watched them. Uh, they're one of the first trucking channels I ever saw. They do, they do, and that guy, that's an owner-operator as well, so that's a good way to get owner-operator information. They have tons of good information over there. Uh, aren't bumper hooks considered a weapon? You could use bumper hooks. I mean... That would be street fighting, right? We improvise, grab whatever you can grab. You could use your fire extinguisher as a weapon, right? So there's lots of ways to do it. Look what happened in Brazil. Brazil is, and here is two different things. The government sets a lot more things than here. That would not work here. I'm telling you, you only got to shut down a couple companies. Not everybody has to go on strike for everybody to get a raise. Cattle haulers can use the shock sticks. Yeah, so they would have a reason to have that. You'd have a tough time passing that off hauling a van full of toilet paper around. I guess you could say sometimes we haul cattle trailers. So Roger, you go 65 and get that, but you got a lot of elevation changes, right? You got a Peterbilt 359 day cab to honk the horn you could buy. Barely hears. That's a real problem. Get a better horn, right? The crack count. If a company offers you a crack count, then it's crap. That's I'm only, you know, I'm iffy on it for going to orientation. Once you're a driver there, they should never put you on a bus or make you share a room. But there are a lot of companies that are paying, you know, airfare and everything else to get you a rental car. Let's look at that. They're already treating you better to start with. So it's got to be better as it goes along. They're spending more on you to get started. Stay out of bad places. You don't need weapons. You never know where you need a weapon anymore. Uh, as a teenager, you work for Allied. We would move a homeowner into it, and uh, and driver loved it. He said it was usually straight run from east, say, mid-coast. There's something for everybody. Uh, loading and unloading a tractor, you know, a trailer full of people's belongings uh, is probably not something I would be interested in doing. There's people that love it and do it all the time. There's a lot of owner-operators that make good money doing it. But you got to go in that knowing that, uh, you know, this is going to be something you're going to be working what is the average mile per gallon companies? What you qualify to obtain a miles per gallon bonus? It uh, that seems to vary. Seven is low. I see a lot of them 
like um oh, what's the name of that uh in El Paso I can't think of them right they're like seven and a half seven point seven you carry a Gerber uh uh Bear Girl survival knife yes Gerber it's made by Gerber exactly in a sheath love it uh use a tire iron that's not a bad idea that's another thing how would you say you carry that I guess you can maybe get away with that. Get a grip here. Uh, I'm on my 30-minute break. What's going on, Thomas? 30 minutes off. Isn't that great? You get to sit there for 30 minutes without getting paid anything? Uh, the mate. Now, that changed uh, into, uh, we're going to check into things you should consider at a company due to pinhead lawyers. So, uh, every Wednesday, we still look at companies, and I just put out some things that you might consider before you look into a company. I mean, it's just, what do I know about it? It's just something you might want to think about, you know. It's not good or bad. It's just something to consider. Uh, there's a trucking convoy going on pretty soon to protest the problems in the industry in uh, the e-logs. Uh, what, nine guys as a convoy? Uh, Ivona, you have a tire iron for what? Yeah, that's the thing, right? Why would you have a tire iron in your uh, truck? So that's another thing. Could you pass it off to a DOT? Can he say, this is a weapon? And you go, well, I have a tire iron. What, you changing tires? What are you doing with it? Can you thread your seatbelt through the door handles and click it at night? Gives you some warning time to break in while they figure out why it won't open. I like the black bungee. Not the round ones, but the flat bungees that are black. And thread that through the handle and click it on the bottom of the seat. Because the more they pull on it, the tighter it gets. So that's what I prefer. And not the two doors to each other. Each door to the seat individually. And uh, keep them bungeed down with those flat black bungee cords. They're only a few dollars at the truck stops. Get a long one so it'll wind all the way around the back of the seat and that door uh, will not open. I to But that I agree, that's just how I think it works better, really. Uh, it's being bought by XP uh, XPO. Hmm. Just by one of those wooden tire kickers, they drill out the middle and use a lead pipe. Big, huge mic. I saw uh, just today, I was looking at uh, tire thumpers. There's one with, that's lead filled for sale. If you're a felon, you don't need a weapon. You have proven you make bad choices. Look, even felons might need to defend themselves out on the road. In Philly, a strike works. My friend tried to cross the line with his truck, and three or four thugs topped him. Sing with an electrician. Yeah, in some states on the East Coast, a strike would probably work better. You only need to get one company closed at a time. It's easy as that. Haven't I done? Have I done any doing a better tanker companies? Uh, this one somebody sent me today, which I can't remember their name, uh, is going to be on there. But also, uh, there's also Trimac, which runs tankers. ABF Freight is being bought by XPO. Really? I haven't heard that. It must have happened during the show. No news should come out while I'm doing this show. Richard says ABF filed for bankruptcy. Wow. Breaking news right here. Crafty Trucker is a good channel. I've never heard of that channel. There's so many out there, right? There's, uh, what does YouTube say? There's like 7 or 8 million channels. Not all trucking channels. In the 90s during the construction strike, migrant workers were helicoptered in for heating and needs until water was open. Yeah, until the strike was over. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know how that would work today. Maybe. They can't helicopter people in to drive your truck when you close one company. One company. There's no federal statute regarding carrying a gun in your cab. There might not be, but what I've always suggested to people is most companies will terminate you for it. So be careful if you're a company driver, which most people watching are. $79 a week for single includes dental and vision. That's If that's good insurance, right, that's what I'm finding. Under $100 is right in where the industry is. Ivona pays five. That's a great deal. You got a good deal going on there. Some are uh, some places are just starting to advertise uh, free insurance now, which is nice too. Do they still make sterlings? No. Holy crap! No. Tanker pays good money. It could. I think it could pay just as good as any other freight. Western Flyer Express renting you a car. That's how it should be. That'd be the best. Fly you in and then get you a car. So they're willing to spend more money on you. It's probably going to work out in your favor. Richard, ABF Freight filed for bankruptcy. What the heck is going on? 
most or if not all companies would fire you if they knew you had a black powder pistol. I wouldn't risk my career on a legal technicality. I totally agree. I mean, I'd, I'd be fired here. I can't go in and say, well, technically it's not, you know, they'd be like, forget it. They don't know no weapons. They don't want you to have any kind of weapon. And that's most companies. That isn't just, uh, you know, one place. I think having a black powder, although it may be legal and it'd be old timey, but uh, no way. I certainly wouldn't recommend it. When you pull a tanker, the shippers and receivers tend to be happy to see you. It depends what you're bringing them. Is TMC a good company to start? No. If you want to start on a flatbed, go over to Maverick. You know, I just can't take all the micromanaging at TMC of keeping the truck clean, having your bed made, cleaning out the grooves inside your floor mat. Yes. Several people wrote to me about that. Cleaning your floor mat grooves, so that has to be done. I just am not going to tolerate it. Uh, you were looking at Crete, but they wanted experience of six months or something within the last year. Maybe that uh, changes depending on what terminal you are. Uh, Hillbilly in Philly. I was never union friendly until you got older and saw the job was more secure. Well, there's no such thing as a secure job anywhere, I guess. So look at New England Motor Freight is Union. Those guys lost their job. You just never know. You certainly could get, while you're there, you're going to be getting better pay. Dart is a good company. Yes, I agree, Greg. Uh, Dart's. They're running ads. I was just seeing that this weekend. They're running like $1,400 home every day ads in Indianapolis. Our company based fuel bonus, depending on where you run, 7.2 is the lowest. Okay, that's not bad. Masilla Valley, that's who it is, right. They, they run this super high fuel bonus thing. Masilla Valley, right. Not a great place. Prime Minister Trucks do 58 to 62, which is the optimal zone for best fuel mileage to put money back in the lease contractor's pocket. The fuel optimal fuel mileage speed, it depends how the truck is set up when you buy it. You should gear the truck and uh, set it up for the fuel mileage, best fuel mileage at the speed you want to run. Maybe they set their trucks up to run really, really slow and block everybody. But, uh, you know, those guys are getting less fuel mileage than I get going faster. So it depends how they set the trucks up. TMC, driving for TMC is like being in the Marine Corps. That's what TMC always stood for, I was told, the Marine Corps. Mark likes e-logs. I'm in with you, right? Let's get them on every truck. Sharpen the side of the crowbar and repaint it. Nice sword. Here again, you got, you know, why do you have a crowbar would be the thing. Maybe on a flatbed you could say that to uh, pull boards off the top of the trailer. Uh, I've heard good things about creep, but you hear a lot of stuff at the truck stops. Yeah, do a lot of uh, do a lot of searching about it. You know, just look up a bunch of reviews. It's a big place. You know, they have Schaefer too. You could run reefers there. How about a big wrench, like a gigantic pipe wrench? I don't think that a wrench uh, makes a good weapon because it doesn't have a good handhold on it for swinging and that kind of thing. So I'm not as much of a fan of that kind of weapon as something where you have a good grip on it and it's not going to come out of your hand. Once it leaves your hand, it's used against you. Uh, you've heard good things about TMC, if you don't mind staying out. I'm not a fan of the micromanaging, okay? Why are people want me to make my bed there? Uh, you'd be sad to see ABF go because you're going to miss their sterlings. Ha! <laughs> they could send them to the museum. A pry bar is a great tool. That would work good. You, that can be explained. You have a pit bull all, as your service animal. <laughs> That's pretty good. Do they have pit bull service animals now? Do good or bad thing on Western Flyer Express. Look, if they're flying you out, that's already good for them to start with. An icebreaker with a wood handle. Here again, right? Well, how do you explain that in June? Uh, you don't realize the mega carriers that you're all working for. I don't work for mega carrier. Are ruining this room for everyone. Their business models, they get rich off of you and barely get by. Uh, <laughs> that's every company. The, every company, well, let's be honest, every company, it doesn't matter what industry it is, is there to make themselves money and pay the employees the least amount possible. That's every single company in America, no matter what they're doing. So, and that, ironically, that's what owner-operators want. They are running a business, so they're the ones that want to keep the money. That's how it works. 
that it's just the reverse. When we work for a company, like I work for a company, they make money from me. We, I think that's understood. And they want to make the most money from me possible, certainly. Absolutely. So really hardly any argument on it. <laughs> I own it. So we're just trying to protect ourselves. Uh, those suckers are making money. If that sucker isn't making money, Prime's not making money. Everybody's got to make money. There should be locks on the inside of the truck since one key opens them. There should be some way to, like, hit another button and lock the key out of it. But then they'd probably say, well, because of safety, some kind of government regulation again, they can't do it. Doing it better used to be A&R transport till what happened? Might as well carry a hand grenade. Yeah, see, the hand grenade, if you throw it, you, that's it, you're done. We don't want to be throwing our weapons. So <laughs> I'm not a fan of You could bonk somebody in the head with it. Prime makes money, but the leasers go broke. Some do, and some make money. Let's start a, a strike with Schneider. It needs to be one large, one of the large companies. All you have to do is strike one company, and all the trucks pull over at the same time so that they can watch it on their boards. And everybody sends in the same message that says, call uh, this person and give them their number. Then you call that person, they go, all right, we want a dime raise, and we're going to get paid all of our detention time or none of the trucks move. You think they can fire everybody? So that as soon as they fire you, remember, you're no longer responsible for the truck. So they are going to fire everybody and leave their trucks all over the country? I don't think so. I don't think so with loads. All that would meet that you'd get what you wanted, as long as it's reasonable. You're not going to get $2 a mile as a company driver, but you're going to get a raise, and then you go to the next one. Within a couple of companies, you're actually doing this. Then the third company, you just call them and go, hey, you're next. And suddenly, everybody's getting a raise. ABF got bought by XPO. I wonder if they'll keep it as a union company then. Peterbilt said ABS files bankruptcy. That is really something. Probably don't need a weapon if you're a hermit or maybe if you have the helmet. Uh, I rather, I think tanker pays good. It can pay good, right? A lot of tanker jobs that I see are percentage. You came back from Richmond hauling 5,900 gallons of 5W40 and paid 5400 Two bucks a mile. Depends where you went uh, to, right? I remember my company gave me a printed paper notice when you took a load headed to Mexico about locking your doors. Huh. Stolen trucks, AC units in your window, kingpin locks, only for Nogales. So I wouldn't want to cross the border, personally, going that way. What's my opinion on Roadmaster? See, I don't have any opinion on truck schools. There's so many. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of them, and each one is run different from the next one that could be just a few miles down the road. So I think that whichever one you're looking at in that city, you should try to find out if anybody's reviewed that specific place because it can be a good trainer here and a bad trainer at the next one just around the corner. Try to get it paid for by the state, though, wherever you go. There should only be dedicated routes. There should... I think that a dedicated route solves a lot of the trucking issues. If you know where you're going and you do the same thing every day, and I talked about this a while ago, and we don't have this job open, but we had an opening Minneapolis to Indianapolis and back, okay, every day. So you would go down, sleep, come back, sleep. There was parking on both ends of the route. So you could park on both ends. Bingo. Problem solved. You had 500 and something, 32 miles a day or whatever it was. Every day, regular route was drop and hook on both ends and parking solved on both ends. There was parking on both ends. Bingo. That kind of thing solves a lot of the problems. You can actually get out and make money. Thoughts on the Swift Knight merger? Uh, I'll have to look back in the uh, in the archives for that. <laughs> right, Ivona, right? We're going to have to get out the old archives for that one. What's a good car hauling company to start out with? You know, I like United Road, and uh, somebody just sent me this one from California over the weekend, too, that I'm going to post on uh, Facebook. There is a California car hauling company as well that takes students, that train students. So look up California car hauling student uh, training. I can't think of the name of it, but there's that, but also United Road if you want to haul cars. And don't forget to watch Jay at 8 p.m. Central tomorrow. He's the car hauling dispatcher. Holy mackerel. 
When your company truck ends up driving itself to Mexico, I don't know about to going to Mexico, for sure. Wooden tire thumpers are sold at most truck stops and are good. If not, I want the one with the handle. So you need a hand grip. You don't want it slipping out of your hand. That's important for any kind of uh, handheld weapon. Is Hummer trucking good? I don't know about Hummer trucking. What are they offering you? Wasn't that Creed a couple weeks ago holding traffic up on I-10? Um, there was PTL that had a problem. I haven't seen the Crete one in the news. That PTL driver went crazy and had 50 cops chasing him. I'm sure you all saw that in the news. Uh, how do you deal with the lack of motivation? Uh, I don't know. The motivation is the pay. I mean, listen to success podcasts. I'm serious about that. I mean, there's tons of that kind of thing out there. But the motivation is, you know, the pay. If you don't like doing it, though, don't do it. Life is really, really short. So... Go do what it is that you like with your life. So if you're not motivated and it doesn't really, you know, get you moving every day, go, what What would you like to do? And go do it. Go do it. Because someday there's not going to be any more days left. Carry a crowbar. It's a swings easy. I have no handhold on it. I don't like that there's no handhold, really. Swift has 60,000 trailers and 22,000 tractors. They'd be a good one to start with, too. Smaller carriers are, care about the drivers and treat their drivers better. I'm not a huge fan of them, though. Most drivers will tell you that they're way happier to smaller carrier. They do seem to say that. Swift Knight is 80000 together. Yeah. There's no news on the Internet about ABF bankruptcy. All are old. I haven't heard it, but, you know, I've been on the live show here. It's certainly possible, but I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything about it. I thought, holy mackerel. They're breaking news during my show. That isn't right. They should come on here to break the news. Low pay is the problem in the industry. Small company, big company, yes. Low pay. That is the, that's why people leave. This driver that wrote to me, you cannot pay somebody $300 a week and then expect them to stay. And, you know, he's sending a message. I need a load. I need to make money. And they're like, there's no loads. You have to wait. Okay, how long does England think that he's going to stay there never and he may leave the whole trucking industry and that's a shame because three hundred dollars is crazy a week for anybody in trucking people make that every day you don't make that in a week of being gone your whole week from your family oh my gosh uh you work for a small company and haven't worked for a large carrier you have friends that work for big companies and they tell you nightmares the bigger it gets the the more uh, political they get, I'll give you that, and the more policy-driven. There's a policy for everything. Community colleges don't offer CDL. They do in Indiana. Ivy Tech and Fort Wayne, uh, Evansville, I think, some of them, they do have a CDL program, not in Lafayette, though. Us run up my truck naked. No one wants to fight you when you're naked. That would probably be the truth. The whole truck stop would empty itself out. Uh, they'll have to honor the union contract until the contract expires. You can buy a company, but you also buy the contract. Oh, that's true. Well, you buy any, you buy all the assets and the liabilities of the company. So they would have to keep it through the end of the contract. It would have to stay union at least. Uh, think CRST or England is the only company you've heard where people claim they'll keep you sitting if you're solo and refuse teaming. Yeah, they really push it there. And so that could be the problem with this driver as well. He's by himself. And so they probably are saying, which I didn't ask him, you know, are they, hey, but if you go with this other student, you can make even, you could get some money then. And that's how they encourage you to do it. $300 a week. Come on, man. Dedicated. Possible problem is not getting enough miles to earn a living. Well, you would know on the dedicated route right away how many miles you're getting because you know how many miles it is. So, of course, you don't take a 1,200 mile a week dedicated route, certainly. Mad Maldi made it to Sherwin-Williams in Greensboro. Hmm. Swift would be bad if they paid practical miles, but that since when does Swift pay household goods miles? Isn't CRST team only? Yes, they are team. CRST is teaming. As far as I know, they're only teams. England has will run some solos, but they don't like it. Uh, dedicated route from Huntsville to Memphis, Monday through Thursday. Best job. You know exactly what you're doing. Even if there's no parking on both ends, you know where to park. You can know when to stop. You know the people where you're going. I think it's the best current best way to solve it.
besides paying for parking. Swift bought Abilene Motors, yeah, a while ago. Yep. Doesn't matter. CRST is pay is that's true. Pay is crap and don't work for him. That's true. It doesn't matter, team or not there. Forget it. Three to a room with no TV. T and the room, the TV's in the regular room and the lights go out at uh, 3. Love it. Or at uh, 11 p.m. I will carry a gun and just not tell nobody. Well, but you can get inspected. And I don't know how many people this has happened to. Uh, one time, only for me in uh, all these years now, have the DOT ever been in my truck. So, But I did get it fully inspected one time, including inside the truck. So... I don't know how you would explain that if they came in your truck. Has anybody had the DOT go in their truck? That's an interesting question. Medicaid to motivate. I don't know about that. Uh, bits and pieces about people running off the road. Really? So you get pulled in one day and searched and you'll be in some trouble. That's what I'm saying, Big Huge Mike. They, uh, they were in my truck only once, though. But it did happen, and they went through everything, threw everything around in there. You know, it was like a, some kind of big drug search. And then they're like, okay, uh, you don't have anything you're not supposed to have, so have a nice day. I'm like, you, are you guys going to fold my drawers up or not? FCC gives your own car and feeds you. Good. Good. That sounds better and better all the time for the place. Mega Cares try to trick their drivers into a lease purchase. If they offer it, uh, they would like you to do that. They'd like you to rent their truck. Yes. Ha Hanson and Atkins take new car haulers and train. That's another uh, car hauler then. Uh, mostly uh, cares to do a lease purchase, uh, lease their dream truck. It's mostly Cascadia's. I don't know. That's not a bad truck. I don't know if I'd own it. The big companies offer a great start with schooling and a job offer right after. You get the keys to a $100,000 truck, yes, and an opportunity to get started. But <laughs> there's good and bad. I mean... Do you want to get started at Sierra England in a hundred thousand dollar truck, you know, or somewhere else a hundred thousand dollar truck? I mean, the thirty cents this guy make it three hundred dollars. Okay, he's in a hundred thousand dollar truck too. So that you know, I don't, I don't know how the dispatchers think. Oh well, this is this is no problem for somebody. Do they not have family? They need to feed. You know, come on, Ryan. Oh, there are policies for interpretation of policies. Yes, when you get into a large place, there's huge books. There's, oh, here's policy 27.1, paragraph 9 about that. I totally agree with that. Right. Uh, you have to check out here. Need to go buy myself a laptop. Oh, no, all right. Well, we'll see you on the laptop. Thanks for coming in. And uh, we'll see you next Monday, uh, comfortable man. Lone Wolf, any companies that pay household goods miles are BS. You don't work for household goods. Yeah, I, I didn't know Swift paid that. I thought that they were practical miles over there. CRST is garbage, and so are their drivers. Well, some drivers don't know the difference, right? Just another mega carrier. I mean, if you come in the industry and you don't know the difference, and so they promise all this, and you're like, oh, this is good. They promise this, and then and it turns out not to happen. It's not, it's not necessarily your fault. You didn't know. I can't blame people for not knowing. Uh, when you go to CDL school, you not need a tie to a carrier. You should try to get it paid by your state if possible. Hey, Martin, what's going on from Germany? What's happening in Germany today? Oh, it's, what's the price of uh, gas over there, petrol? All of a sudden, an owner-operator could not make any money. They can. My experience with a work van is that finance company van insurance takes all the money. They can, but I've always suggested that a lease operator, which I think is different uh, than an owner-operator, doesn't really make as much at the end of a year as a good company driver makes at a good that's at a good company that's been there. I don't think so. Swift doesn't have a contract. That's correct. There's no contract at Swift, which is nice. The only thing you have to pay them back is for the motel housing if you're not in the area. And they will arrange that and you can pay it back. Otherwise, no contract, which I think is pretty good. Pam does the household goods. Who cares about them, right? So it's been 8 to 12%, I agree, but they start people at 30 cents a mile at PAM. 30 cents. That's ridiculous. That Warner tractor, they're too lazy to paint it blue. That's pretty good. You just left uh, Swift and no contract. Correct. There's no contract there, only the hotel. And if you sleep in your car, presumably there's, no that. there's none of that. Uh, CRST in England are the lowest. They're certainly the bottom of the list of places that you should go. 
Are Love's points going away? I hope not. I have tons of points. Why would Love's points be going away? Uh, Ivona ate at the Big Texan Steakhouse. Tell me you got your steak for free. Uh, you Georgia area look up Mike Frost right small company good love the box text and was anybody trying to get that free steak hopefully Ivona lots of creative ways to conceal carry they went through the whole truck I will say that and if they found a gun on a search you got a huge problem a huge problem first off I'd get fired on the spot if they wrote that on the DOT thing I'm fired so uh it's a huge risk I mean and you'd have a real problem getting a job somewhere else. It's something you really have to consider when there are other weapons you could have that would easily pass, like a big tire billy, that kind of thing. It's really, really a huge risk. You can carry a gun, just don't use it. Dar discharge a weapon in Jersey, you're facing a felony. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to really have good proof of when you shoot somebody also. And, you know, it's not as easy as people think it is, so... It's not as hard to beat somebody about the head and uh, neck with a tire billy. If you go into a lease purchase, never expect to buy the truck. People do buy the trucks out, right? I'm always against them in that. There are people that finish them out and buy their truck, get their title. It does happen. <coughs> I have industry haters on here. Yeah, there's always industry haters everywhere. Uh, ATA, not a fan. Exactly. They're not helping anybody but the companies. Uh, search inside the truck cab only once. Okay, twice going to Canada and once returning at James. Now, I went across the border a few times for 3M, and all they did was search the trailer and ask me if I had any cigarettes. So, But I got searched right here at an inspection in Michigan, actually, at the 167 on 94 going towards Detroit. That uh, scale right there. Uh, most mega carriers are about moving freight and don't care about their drivers. Well, you know, not to defend them. That is their goal, but... They don't realize that uh, if they cared about their drivers, they could get freight move better. People, they think that if they continue to get new drivers, that they don't have to pay them anything, even though there's all this shortage, you know, that they talk about. Be aware, Bear and Wasp is legal to carry, but illegal to misuse. Might not get away with it inside the truck. That's interesting. You could say... Uh, well, the bear spray, you know, I don't, I think you could get away with bear spray. You go, look, we go to Montana all the time. I'm afraid of bears. I think you could uh, wasp spray. You say, look, when I got this truck, there were wasps in it. I don't know. Use any product, right? What are my thoughts on Crete? I like it. Uh, give them a call. Well worth it. I think it's dumb that you use, uh, are forced to go to college recognize CDL schools. Some of the best training you get is from old school. Well, you don't have to. You can get your CDL however you want. It's the tough part is getting a job. You're not by law required to go to school. Uh, while Bill changed your hours at work and have to miss the broadcast, change them back. Well, I've been wondering where you are. Quit your job so that you can watch the show. <laughs> Thanks for popping in today anyway. Last thing, if you're a company driver, I'm still wearing your vest, by the way. I wear that when you see vests on my Instagram, uh, trucking underscore answers. That is uh, the vest you gave me. Last thing, if you're a company driver who's reliable and shows up on time, why would a mega carrier not worship you? Because they can replace you with somebody uh, that makes less. You know, they just, some places don't care. Some places care. You know, oh, we'll keep you. They have these bonuses for staying and stuff, and then some just don't care. It's all about getting new people. You can tell a place that has a sign-on bonus for new people, and then once you're there, nothing. You get a bonus next year? No, that's for new people. Bonus for you? No. So that's that's how you can tell the difference. Got searched. Ivona got searched once years ago. Same program, right? After talking to him for a long time, ask why. Finally, oh, he was looking for falsified log sheets. They never said why they were searching me. Just, we're going to search your truck. And it was two or three of them. This was many years ago, same as you. Probably early 90s. And uh, they went through, but I mean, they went really through the truck. Through the whole sleeper, threw all my clothes on the uh, bed and everything, messed everything up. And then left it. They go, okay, you're fine. And uh, fortunately, I didn't have a false log or anything, I guess. So they would have found that. So I guess you didn't either. I wonder what they would have done about that. I guess you'd get it, start getting tickets and stuff. I should promote the oil field. I do recommend the oil field. If you live in the area, live in Texas, or want to move to Texas, oil field jobs are 
plentiful and pay tons of money. You need to live down there. Is Schneider good? You know, I don't, I like the Schneider. Um, they're calling it an apprentice program. So they're also bringing people in without any kind of contract, which is the way it should be. Pay for your own CDL. That way you're not tied to a company if you can. Get the state to pay it first. That's what I did. And you have tied the industry because you have family that's driven. That's a good way to do it as well. Many states are paying it, people. Don't forget about that. Wasn't there a gun shootout between some drivers at Love's? Yeah, that woman shot that dude for a... He told her to move or something, and she wouldn't move. And she goes, oh, move? I'm going to shoot you. And she did. But again, she got arrested, but only because you're not supposed to just shoot somebody for asking you to move, apparently. Maybe she was mad that she didn't have any Love's points. Anyone can still carry or not better have a ton of money for a lawyer. You better call Saul. I cannot stress enough that it is a huge risk to have a pistol, even if it's black powder. Mega carriers see their drivers as slaves. Smaller carriers see their drivers as family. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't want to see everybody's family. A lot of my family I wouldn't want to work for. Loading in Gerald, Missouri, heading to Dallas, where it's warm. Finally, somebody gets to go south. Yeah, well, Bill, you immediately there so that you can get on this. That's, uh, forget that place. Bear spray won't hurt a human. Regular mace is stronger. Isn't uh, bear spray just pepper spray in like a high-power aerosol can that goes like 25 feet? And it's a bigger uh, bottle. I think going to schools required starting in 2020, they talked about required training. It isn't, uh, I don't know that it's mandatory yet. Smaller carriers are quicker about fixing problems. Uh, depends what the problem is. In a large place, you have policies, though. What's the policy about that? Wasp spray is better? That's interesting. Oh, Wild Bill asks a question I don't get very often. Who do I work for? So, uh, look, I don't uh, say who I work for, Wild Bill. You may not know. But uh, that keeps them out of my videos. They don't get a say in my videos. And I also don't recruit for them, even though we have a recruiting bonus there. So... I do not get a recruiting bonus like so many drivers on YouTube. How many drivers do you see on YouTube? Oh, look, where this is where I work. Here's my number. Tell them you talk to me. I don't do any of that, right? I don't recruit for them. That They have recruiters for that. And I also don't say where I work to keep them out of the video. So they are out of everything. It's only legal when used in malice to spray in someone's eyes. Well, I guess if they're coming at you with something, it's a real problem. Doesn't J.B. Hunt do all kinds of freight? They do a lot of intermodal, yes. What would require a Twit card? It would, but they're bigger out there than all the ones. Then they they pay a less amount, twenty cents or thirty cents a mile plus stops. They have a you have to call them about their intermodal pay. So much for a lift on and so much per box. Yes, some companies will fly you to Texas. I love it when they fly you out somewhere. How many company trucks does a company have to have in its fleet to be a mega carrier? A lot, thousand. Could have a taser. I wonder if you could carry a taser in all the states. But that's close range, too. Uh, you had Border Patrol check your truck and left it a mess. You, they should put your stuff away, right? But here again, right? Only one time. It's very rare. Did they find a black powder pistol in your truck, Monica? They set you up with housing. They should. Uh, these oil fields do. But you have to share a house. If we're talking about oil fields... You share a house with, you know, eight or ten other people or whatever. Chad, thanks for popping in. I appreciate you coming in today. Uh, Hillbilly has a gun permit, and it's only good under your state of residence. You could get arrested in another state. Unless they have some kind of a reciprocal agreement, it's just a huge risk. There's so many other things that you could have. Oh, okay, wow, Bill, I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> Trucking is what you make of it. It's the best world to some. Look, if you don't like it, if it's not motivating you, it doesn't matter what it is. You need to jump out and go, what would you do if you weren't getting paid for it? How about that? That's the success quote of the day. Do what you would do that if you would do it even if you didn't get paid. Because going to work and not liking it every day, that's horrible. Uh, Hugh, no alcohol in the truck. Yes, oh my gosh, people do not have any kind of booze in the truck. Drink it all in the truck stop and throw those bottles out before you get out back on, on the road. There's just no way you keep it in the truck. 
what other job can I consume copious amount of podcasts? Exactly. I mean, I have tons of them saved up and listen to them all day. I totally agree. Rhino carries an HK45. Nice. Know who not to mess with. Is Knight good? Well, like we were saying about Knight and Swift, and probably Knight has the same policy. If you go in there to their truck school, they don't have a contract there. They do not uh, make you sign a contract. So if you can somehow arrange, if you live in the area, there's really no uh, no out of cost money to go through their school. So I think that is really an interesting way to do it. Thoughts on bull hauler? I have a job offer? I've never done bull hauling. Has anybody out here done any kind of live uh, hauling? Nothing like watching a driver going loves to buy a twenty four pack. Yeah, you. You never know. Maybe they're uh, giving it away uh, to somebody. I'm not sure about that. I voted says it's none of their business. Yes. Bull haulers make a lot of money. I don't know how much money they make. As long as you get paid. I always say get paid per hoof. I vote hauled livestock. How did it go? And uh, what's the pay on livestock? Is it per hoof like I'm thinking? Because then you want to haul smaller things, you know, per hoof. Let me announce this again on the show. Next week. Next week, the C400 XT, it's in the box, right? Giveaway will be next week's show. So be sure to tune in for that on next Monday's live show. So that'll be interesting. So uh, if we get paid per hoof. I think a dollar a hoof uh, might do it, especially on those ones that have two layers. And uh, also, when you walk next to the bull hauler, uh, don't. <laughs> I've, seen, uh, I've seen on videos people who walk too close to it, and uh, then they get sprayed. So I think that's a bit really bad. Who'd want to drive a truck where you're sprayed bear, bear spray all over the seats and the tear from that one time you had to spray an unruly lot lizard? Well, out of the cab. Why are you spraying them out of the cab? <laughs> you're spraying them in the truck? Holy mackerel. New truck rule in 2020. They're going to retry training as a two years experience. What are my thoughts? I haven't heard that, that they would require that. And I wouldn't like that. I would think trainers should have five years of experience. Trainers should have five years of road experience and a clean record to be a trainer. You don't want somebody training that doesn't have the any experience. So my thoughts are five years. I have not heard that anybody would require uh, two years of experience for training, though. Why do so many video uh, videos of protesters in California for log hauling? Uh, maybe they're getting some kind of hosing on the hauling, which uh, almost rhymes. I haven't seen uh, videos of protests. Who knows? It's probably emissions. I'm going to say for California, they're probably going to require the log hauling trucks to pass emissions. And most of them are like 1971 auto cars. So uh, they don't know how they're going to put emissions on them. <laughs> That's what I think is, gonna, is happening on them. Amanda, have, have to get an eye exam and med express will finish with DOT physical. Good. Good. I mean, you got you did what you're supposed to do. They should know what they're talking about in there. Good. Then you can get back on the road Friday or somewhere anyway. Because there's no reason for you not to pass it if you've done what you're supposed to do. These places. So you paid per load. All right. <laughs> not per hoof, I guess. Money was great. You have to care for the animals like they're people. And don't stop except for fuel. Uh, care for them like they're people. That is interesting. Do you, do you have to water them and stuff during your trip? And uh, food? I guess it depends how long the trip is, right? California has too many tree-hugging communist liberals. <laughs> that is said by many people. Uh, I think parts of California are tree-huggers. They block the roads with signs. Oh, maybe it's people blocking the log haulers to go up there and not cut the trees down. You were caught in Missouri with fireworks in your truck. What happened? Did they inspect your truck? And are you not allowed to have any in the truck? I probably wouldn't have any. I would not recommend you have them. What did they do to you there? And did they say, show show them to me? Get it? Show me? Get anybody? Huh, I'll be here all week, believe me. When I went to England, my trainer had a month more experience than me. Yeah, that's how it works in England. You go to training, you go to trainer, and after that, you get your own student. <laughs> You're like, wow, you can just get your own student. That is how they do it there, right? 
So it's a, you have a little more experience than that person. And so, suddenly you're a trainer. You know, if you stay there a year, the CEO of the company at England, that's a true story. Done it, and you're going to smell like BS every day, Ryan O. Uh, I think it would be a stinky job. I'm curious if you have to stop and feed them and how that would work. If you have to treat them like people, I mean, do I have to go to the drive through I need 77 number fours, uh, but three with Diet Coke. I just don't know how that would work. But uh, seriously, don't you have to clean the trailer out a lot too? That's what it would seem like to me. Uh, but look, I never did it, okay? I've never hauled uh, anything that was alive. Uh, it could be a combustible or volatile, volatile hazard with the fireworks. Yes, I don't think you're allowed to carry them in the truck. So I'm, I want to see what he says about that, but I would not recommend bringing fireworks home from these states where they're cheap, like on the Tennessee border or whatever, big fireworks or, or whatever. They offer 25% of the load hauling cattle out overnight, off a day, and repeat. It depends what the load pays them. So on percentage, it doesn't make any difference what you're hauling. What does the load pay, and what's my percentage? Uh, if it's hot and you blow a tire, you better hook up a hose to sprinkle water on them, or they could get hot and die. Well, that stinks. Do you carry some kind of water or something? You blow a tire and hook up a hose. Yeah, it would get hot in that metal trailer. And I'd feel bad for them in the wintertime, too. I see them now that are covered. That's probably some kind of regulation, which I guess it should be. They put these wood slats up in the bull haulers and stuff and uh, cover them up. <coughs> Cattle hauling is not for everyone. Yeah, that is true. The ECM in your truck is screwy. That could cause huge problems. Uh, Mark, did I go to CDL school? How did I start? I did go to CDL school. In 1988, I went to a professional truck driver training school, PTTS, in the south side of Chicago. South side. And uh, that was three weeks long. and was $1,595. And uh, that's how I started. And, you know, I was, I was working at Arby's before that. And I thought, man, you know, I would come home at 3 in the morning or whatever, after we close, and I would see these commercials on TV, on my black and white TV, that said, uh, hey, make the big money and get the respect of the motoring public. I remember that. And I thought, well, that's me. I love the big money and respect of the public. And if you love to drive, come and be a driver. And I said, well, I love to drive. And there I went. And so, and actually on the third week, you tested on Thursday because Friday was for retesting. So everybody that passed Thursday, which was almost all of us, I think only a couple of people failed it. Uh, we graduated Thursday, and then uh, Monday I went to work at Economy Transport. So I uh, went right to work on Monday morning, and there was no training. I just went to work in a GMC Brigadier and a Ford 8000. The Brigadier was a single axle, so depending on how heavy the load was, and uh, off I went with local Chicago deliveries. What a blast that was. Uh, while Bill was speeding, and they checked your book and looked through your truck and found the fireworks. It was an out-of-state driver's license. They confiscated the fireworks, so no ticket or anything. At least you didn't get a fine or anything for carrying that. And back, uh, you know, a while ago, it wouldn't have gone on anything. But uh, that isn't, you got lucky. I think you got a little bit lucky on that. It's a cattle hauler on your day off. You have to work with the animals on your day off. So you take them out of there. You take the animals out of the truck on your day off and read to them. Listen, today we're going to do basic math, you guys. Okay, no, listen up. Listen up, you guys. Here it is, three plus, right, okay, so that's working with the animals on your day off. You believe, it's hard to believe, right, that comedy clubs haven't called me. There's nothing wrong with driving an older truck. Uh, the coffin sleepers, at least put a big sleeper on those things. Right, my first sleeper truck was really small, 40, 36 inches maybe by six feet, like the minimum. Super tiny sit-in sleeper when I went on the road for Regal, which would have been in the, probably the spring of the uh, next year, 89. You hauled cattle in 82 and made 27%. It just depends what the load pays, right? If load pays 500 bucks or $5,000, what does an average load pay? I'm curious now. How much does an average uh, load pay? Uh, you can you only get the tire change at a shop. If you have to stop for an extended time due to breakdown, you should lo unload at a sale barn. How do you arrange that uh, on the road? That's really interesting. 
Wild Bill got no ticket, but that was many years ago. And those guys had a nice 4th of July. Uh, that comes in handy when they're counting their wait time in line, yes. The older trucks were awesome and looked nicer. Yeah, I don't get paid on how nice the truck looks, though. The FLD 120, I ran many 120s. <clears throat> they were out for years and years. <clears throat> that was the truck I had with the N14 uh, Cummins N14 Plus Red Top Cummins, which I really liked. Uh, since it's President's Day, uh, what president would I like to have ride shotgun? Um, we'll go with somebody older. How about Grover Cleveland? We can talk about the old days. That uh, that usually doesn't uh, provoke too many angry emails <laughs> to me. Uh, so uh, we'll go with Cleveland. Uh, you see in more and more Mack tractors. Why? Uh, yeah. Because, look, this new Mac, let's be honest, it looks great. You know, and I always say, look, you don't get paid on how the truck looks, and I agree. But uh, I think it does look good. The Anthem trucks, they are a good-looking truck, and I love to see one at the truck show. I'm sure that they will have one there. So, Monica, only the knives, and you have a lot. You need everybody, regardless of a weapon, everybody should have a knife on them all the time. I use one nearly every day for something, but poking lights out and, you know, getting out the glad hand seals and everything. There's tons of knife uses, cutting. Come on. Everybody should carry some kind of good knife on them all the time. <laughs> you want Trump or Reagan to ride shotgun with you? Well, I think you're only going to get one of those choices. I thought Mac was dying. Look, these new Macs look really good. They're coming back from uh, from the dead. The Mac Anthem is not the worst looking truck in the world, but Mac R model was better. Huh. Oh my God, they those things were a disaster. Uh, you drive a Mac and good work when the small Mac truck when you you work the small things out, it takes hills pretty good. Well, that's all part of the drive line, right? And do you have a gold Mac on the front bulldog or a silver bulldog? New England Motor Freight goes broke. You've been there, done that. You work for AAA Trucking. They went out of business 12 years down the toilet. No pay, no benefits, no pension. Well, the union, if AAA, and I don't know if they were a union, the union pension should be guaranteed, right, by the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, PBGC. They guarantee pensions. So if it was a private, though, not a union pension, I don't know. I personally don't know how that works. I don't have a pension where I am, and I think they're unusual, but... That's what the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation is for, to guarantee pensions from bankrupt pension plans. Did Max fix the weather stripping? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Freightliner finally fixed the weather stripping in Cascadia's. Uh, you saw beat up CH-13. Yeah, a little bit older. Those, when they started to change, and get a little better. Uh, my, big, huge mic. It's noisy, but doesn't leak from the factory stripping. But every time the window gets changed out, oh, the old Freightliners were just the opposite, right? When you would get them new, we would get them in new uh, Columbias and FLDs and stuff, and they would leak, uh, you know, all the time. And so you would have to either get a new windshield put in or strip it yourself. You know, I would caulk it up with that stuff around there, and then it wouldn't leak anymore. Uh, drip Tony the truck stop tiger in Louisiana. Did he die? And that's a shame. That thing should have been taken out of there and, uh, you know, put somewhere where it belonged, not sitting around in a truck stop. That was horrible. Uh, you know what they say? It's built like a Mac. Yeah, but it rattles like a Mac. <clears throat> uh, Grover Cleveland, Teddy Roosevelt must have good stories. Yeah, we don't want to get somebody too polarizing, though. Not, uh, not on here. I don't like to be... To get that out there because they'll be like Teddy Roosevelt. I can't believe you. So, believe me, I get the emails all the time with stuff like that. So, Grover Cleveland pretty much has a neutral uh, effect on people. Freightliner Classic XL. Yikes! What's the? I had a Classic uh, XL. Uh, it was a Freightliner XL Classic, which was the short-nosed one. What's the deal with the long haul Mack trucks nowadays? All you see is Volvo, Freightliner, and Kenworth. There's companies never really bought Macs long haul, right? You never saw a lot of them out on the road. You see more coming in now. And I just did a video last week about Sharky, and they use Macs. But you don't see that many Macs from companies on the road. A pension is not always secure. Look at Kodak, who went bankrupt. 
Verizon had pension threaten to bankrupt on them if they didn't agree to reduction. Well, what is the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation for? That's what the thing is for at the government. It's kind of like the FDIC of pensions. It's there to guarantee a pension. Uh, when you open the door that a Peterbilt, you hear a vacuum because it seals up so well and no road noise. That's the idea, right, on a peat is that it's made better. So not only are you getting good health insurance, you're getting a less expensive, you know, a better made truck. Oh, UPS was on Mac. Yeah, you know, that is true. You still see UPS running Mac uh, day cabs here some. They seem to have a good mix, but yeah, UPS has a lot of Mac day cabs. That's true. Uh, Max a bit about local small trucking. They do a lot of uh, construction and that stuff, tougher trucks. I remember when JB Hunt was all cab over. I remember when everybody was all cab over. I drove plenty of cab overs in my, uh, in my time, certainly plenty of them. Pension gear, uh, Guarantee Corp. Is there only 33 cents in the dollar? Okay, so you, so they guarantee a part of your pension. I mean, that is no good. That they only get, you know, you kind of like the FDIC. Then up to two hundred thousand uh, is all you get. That's why most of us have to split our money up into numerous accounts because of the account amount limit on there. So the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corp. You can't split your pension up. So. So those New England Motor Freight people may only get 33 cents on the dollar of their pension. What if you're 60 years old and you work there and uh, you're going to rely on that? Now you're only going to get a third of it. You only have a few years left to work somewhere else. I think that's a huge problem. And did you know that Paul McCartney's wife is a shareholder on New England Motor Freight? I read that this weekend. Yeah, that Paul McCartney. His current wife is the daughter or the granddaughter somehow of the owner of New England Motor Freight, and she's one of the people that signed on the bankruptcy filing for the place. Really? I didn't know that. I had no idea about that. UPS has an old restored F model. I'm sure they don't use that thing, although they probably wash it every day as well. Uh, let's see. You have to have enough money. You use different accounts. Uh, yeah, right. I'm, that's what I'm saying is that, you know, when you have so much money, you have to use different accounts. You got to spread it around to different banks. Because the FDIC only guarantees up to two hundred thousand per account, right? So you got to put some here and some there. It's so annoying to keep in track of all that. I, I didn't know that PBGC only guaranteed a third of your money. Uh, union pensions are separate from the company. Therefore, if the company goes bankrupt, your pension is still good. If the union is still pension is valid. Uh, you mean Paul? Paul McCartney. Paul is dead. Paul. Paul is dead. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney, the singer. Yeah, alive, right? <laughs> Is this some kind of Elvis thing that I'm missing? I, I may have missed this somewhere. Did he go down in a yellow submarine? Oh, yeah. I said that too, right. <laughs> the clone of uh, him, maybe. Do you, did you know the FDIC has 33 years to pay you the money? No. They have so... They, I get it paid over the next uh, 33 years of the money. That's see, that's why you got to start filling a mattress up. Apparently, when you ha when you're in spread out like that, when you got your assets spread over a bunch of uh, a bunch of different places. Yeah, Ivona, I don't know what we're where we went with that. What do I think of per load pay? Really killed me on taxes with pride. What do you mean they pay you a percentage of the load, or each load you get an X amount? And why would that kill you with taxes? Your total amount paid is still your total amount paid. Ask my banker. Yeah, I'll have my people ask the uh, banker over there. I have a personal banker over there, so I'll just uh, pick them up on the red phone and see what they say about it. All Chinese restaurants have a safe in the ceiling. Don't sit under it, I guess. Back in the 60s, it was rumored that Paul was dead. The Beatles had clues on albums if you played them backwards. Oh, and now we don't have any way to play them backwards, so there's no way to find out. The Teamsters are broke. They don't have the cash to cover their pensions. It's uh, too bad for its members. That is something that I believe. And I just thought the PBGC took care of that. You can't ever put your money with a place like that, I mean, and just hope that all these years later you get it. Sir England pays your detention after four hours. You get $10 an hour. Oh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. 
You can hook up with uh, uh, CR England Bottom Bunk, who was on here a little bit earlier. Uh, yeah, Pete Nelson dropped some information on Pride. What is this per load, and why does it hurt your taxes? At the end of the year, if you make fifty thousand, it doesn't matter if you got a one day or through the whole year. You still, it's the total amount you made per year. So that's what matters. Uh, any free burritos yet? Not yet, but remember, next week, free headset will be a giveaway next week. All right. So. Uh, you're a hippie with a turntable. I have a, a turntable in a Zenith console unit, so uh, that where the top of it lifts up. The only way that works out, in your opinion, if you had a full control over what it was invested in. Look, at, right, It's you, then you still can risk it. The only safe way, I guess, is to keep it in a jar. So otherwise, you're going to take a risk or have some kind of income that continues to produce money after you're dead. It would be the only other way to do it. Uh uh, your mom told you to steer clears of guys named Mark because they're trying to sell you something. Yes, like the free headset giveaway next week on the show. Be careful of those names. Certainly always listen to your mother. Oh, my God, Ivona, right? He's an old hippie. doesn't know what to do. He should stick with the old or go with the new. Exactly. That's very good. So concealed carry from Philadelphia, which would be Pennsylvania, has reciprocity with 19 states. Let's be honest. Has anybody tried this? Probably nobody has. Has anybody been caught at a DOT inspection with a gun where you have a license? And what do they say about it? I got to think it's a problem. Maybe it's not a big problem. As a company driver, I'd be fired. And that's probably almost everybody on here. Your company pays $100 a day for breakdown after 48 hours. Is that good? No. You should get a day's pay for every day that you're out, working or not working. So you have two days of no pay, and the third day you get $100. So in three days, you got $100. Now, what do you think about that? Is that great? No. That's $30 a day. You can make that picking up scrap metal and taking it to the recycling in your town. Uh, you can certainly do that on Uber or any of these other places. So, no. So, Ivona, they didn't find it. Okay, well, it, it's just ri too risky for me. Yeah, <laughs> Almond, um, right. That's, I mean, come on. That's, that's, I could feel like that's like a punk question. I'm getting punked on the question. You're making 40 cents a mile, but on a dedicated lane from Salt Lake to Montana, 3,400 miles a week. Right. Okay. Decent pay. Two ninety a week for benefits is a lot. That's a lot of money out of that. But you have the regular runs, a lot of miles. At forty cents, I mean, twelve what thirteen sixty on that. But two ninety is a lot, and that's thirteen sixty is not great on thirty four hundred. Really, it should pay more. But the regular run, you don't have to worry about parking. I would, I would press them to cut those benefits. Three hundred dollars a week is a lot of money. Uh, if the truck is fixed and you're rolling at 4 p.m. on the third day, do you get nothing? Oh, you, it's usually how it is set up, Truck or Hershey, that it's got to be a full 24 hours. Usually that's how they do it. So even so, what if you got 100 bucks for that day? You, so you said Saturday, Sunday, you leave at 4 p.m. Monday, and they go, here's $100. Oh, my gosh. Uh, do I work today? Yes, I do work today. There's no federal law against having a gun in a CMV. That is correct. You only need to abide by the state law and your company. Re always remember that. Re abide by your company. Like here, no weapons. Instant termination. Instant. What do I think about Trans Am? You would see them everywhere. Right. They advertise everywhere. You see them everywhere. No. No. No thank you for uh, Trans Am. So we're going to bypass them. There's plenty of other better places to go. Now, it's not like England where, it, you know, totally avoid it like the plague that it is. Or they're putting three people in a truck. But uh, certainly, it's not a place that you're going to want to make a phone call to. And I would say probably they would not allow a gun in the truck either. Or fireworks, for that matter. Or a Paul McCartney album. Holy mackerel. Ivona has no work today. Right off on Mondays, usually which is really good to uh, get a nice long weekend. I really love it. So 3,400 miles a week at 40 cents is not going to be great at 290 on benefits. I think that's too much for benefits. 
That's way more than I'm uh, I'm finding at a lot of places. One to two hundred a week seems to be family pay for benefits. More than that is they're high in the industry. Then I had a breakdown one day and the shop was fixing, but didn't call uh, because it doubled until the afternoon and give me breakdown pay. Well, that you should automatically get breakdown pay. A good company should pay breakdown pay. You should because you called too late. It, you know you should get paid. They shouldn't say, well, if you call us, they darn well know the truck is broke down. I call them to have somebody come and fix it. I got mad enough to send a message saying, if you don't pay your 21-day out, guys, a minimum the week that we're going to go home. Weekly minimum for the company is cheap. I like a minimum guarantee. I have one, and then you know what you're going to make. The one I always talk about is Newsbound. They guarantee you $250 a day, every day. So on a breakdown like this, where this driver got $100 for three days, you'd get $750 at Newsbound for those same three days. That's a huge difference. That's where a guarantee is very helpful. You stopped at the border once and the officer saw your gun in your bag and let you go because you had your weapons license. That's the legal thing to do, right? But it's a, just a risk. It is just a risk to take. Hey, Brandon, good afternoon. Uh, Sergeant Pepper was the first album after Paul was dead, and that's how the rumor started. Don't we see him on TV and stuff, though? I mean, it seems like I've seen him on shows and stuff. His The thing is, his wife is on the board of this place. You cannot tell me New England Motor Freight didn't know in advance that they were going to file bankruptcy. Now, they didn't announce it, but several people wrote to me, and it's now in the news, that Friday most of the place closed up, and so nobody has a job. They violated the WARN Act, which they're supposed to give 60 days notice, but they don't care because they're bankrupt and the owner's 80-some years old. Nothing's ever going to happen to them. Nothing. People should always have a resume ready, be ready to take a physical, have money, not at New England because they're home every day, but if you're on the road, have money in case your company closes to get you home from as farthest away in the point in the country as possible. That's what you need to have available to you all the time. Uh, if you log time in a state that doesn't recognize your permit and you get stopped the next state, there could be a problem. Oh, wow. That'd be really nefarious for them to uh, check it that way. Must be an identical twin. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's Paul's twin. Paul, No, Paul died and they replaced him with somebody that looks just like him, I guess. Trucker coach, hey, what's happening? Sent some people over to you today that had owner-operator questions that I have no idea about. Uh, thanks for popping in today, Brandon. If for some you're teaming with someone, do I need to show a pre-trip on your Qualcomm when we swap seats in the middle of the trip? If so, where can I find that? Well, before you drive, you are supposed to ensure that the vehicle is safe for operation. Okay, the word pre-trip isn't really in there, but the vehicle you have to ensure that it is safe for operation before you drive. So, I say personally, how do you do that without showing it? How can you ensure that it's safe if you don't go out and ensure that it is safe? Okay, that's what I'm saying. So if somebody, if the DOT asked you, how did you ensure the vehicle was safe if you didn't show it so you have no time, right? So, because that's on duty time. So how would you ensure that it was safe for operation? You can't. So what do I say? Yes, you need to show that time. Because that's the law. You have to ensure the vehicle is safe for operation. You can't, how do you know if there's a problem back in the back of the trailer if you didn't go back there? To go back there, that's on duty time. Bingo. Log it. So I say log it. Uh, well, everyone else has a minimum, not good one, but guys who volunteer to stay out don't get a minimum on their home time. Usually I would still make well above the minimum. You should make above the minimum. The minimum is there, of course, as a floor so that you don't get hosed like on this driver sitting for two days without getting paid. At least like a news bomb, it's going to get $250 a day and think, okay, I don't have to get a $400 check because my truck broke down for four days. You know, that's the thing of it. Back in the 60s. Yeah, I didn't know that it was your place. That's before my time, I guess, being as I'm just in my extreme upper 30s. Uzbek Trucking, they work in 1099. The name sounds like they work in 1099. They steal you six ways from Sunday. Just that kind of name says 1099 to me and probably says Chicago or Chicago suburb. Are you allowed to sit in the passenger sleeper in the passenger seat while in the sleeper berth while traveling? 
How long should you show a pre-trip? You should show a pre-trip for the amount of time that it takes to do a pre-trip. There's no set time in the FMCSA. Passenger seat is not in the sleeper. The sleeper berth says you must be resting in or upon the sleeper berth. I don't know what they mean upon, but to be in the sleeper, you have to be in the sleeper. Now, if you're going to get a break when you get where you're going, you can log the passenger seat as off-duty time. So uh, so if you're going to get at least an eight, I believe it says an eight-hour break, then the time in the passenger seat is logged as off-duty time. Otherwise, no, you can't. But the seat is not the sleeper. Do people do that? Look, I know people do that. You get and sit there and log that sleeper. I get it, right? Absolutely. But legally, no. Uh, if you want to see my goat, she has her handlebar-shaped horn. That's pretty good. I would like to see that. They're classifying you wrong with their 1099 in you. No doubt, right? It's outside Chicago. Google Paul is dead. Heather Mills McCartney's ex has a story to tell. Oh, it, the, the story gets thicker. Once you drop the trailer, it's the next driver's problem. That's how a lot of people think, and I get a lot of that because I do a lot of dropping and hooking. So I don't know if I show pre-trip or post-trip. Well, you'd be required to uh, fill the post-trip out if there are trailer problems. Here we go again. Okay, so you're required to fill out a post-trip inspection if you noted any problems. If you do not note any problems with the unit, you do not have to fill out a post-trip inspection. But here's the other part of that. How do you know if there's any problems if you don't go check to see if there are any problems? So if you didn't check it, how did you? How could you see if there were any problems? So if you have no time and didn't check it, how can you then say there were no problems? And you go, I didn't check it. Because any checking of the unit, any work on the truck or anything is on duty time. So consider that when you're logging this stuff. So if even though you don't have to fill the sheet out, you have to know that there were no problems. And then you don't have to legally fill a sheet out unless your company requires it. Even so, you can't check it off duty. Uh, don't put down the landing gear. Then. Oh, yeah, I'd leave the landing gear up. You're all set. Just literally... So you could stay in the truck, right? Automatic release it, psh, drive out, done. What's the, uh, Tim? What are the rules for that? Uh, you know, each person will have to deal with that themselves. What about Landstar? Look, I like Landstar. The website says six months experience. I didn't know that, but only like them because they were at the truck show a few years ago, Mid America Truck Show, and they had their load board live. And I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. You can pick from any of the loads they have or whatever. So, and they'll probably be there again this year. I didn't look. Trucker's Coach probably has way more information about that kind of thing than I do. So you should go over and uh, check him out, certainly. Uh, Tim, well, that's uh, for you to say. Uh, do I need to fill out a pre-trip on the Qualcomm, even if no problems were found? No, not if there's no problems found. You don't have to. The thing is, the logging part. People always get confused about the logging part. If you don't find any problems, you don't have to do it, depending on what your company says. Okay, your company may require it. But how do you check it without being on duty? You have to be satisfied that there are no problems. You can't know that without looking at it, without going and checking it. So there's really no way to get around logging it, I don't think. I haven't found a way to get around it. Because people say you don't have to log it. Well, you have to be satisfied. So how do you check it, and how are you satisfied without without checking it, and then you have to log that? Make sure to pay close attention to wordage. That's how a lot of drivers get into trouble. Yes, that that's exactly true. Everything has its uh, its own meaning. So if you if you're checking it, if you're satisfied, you go all right. I'm satisfied. There's no problems. How do you check it? What if a DOT officer goes, well, here you went right from driving to sleeper. What it, what about this? Oh well, there were no problems. Well. How do you know there were no problems? Well, I looked at it. Well, then why isn't it logged? Because looking at it is logged on duty time. There would have to be some kind of on duty time to uh, walk around the truck. And so otherwise you'd have to say, I didn't look at it, which then is a violation. Because at the post trip, you'd be required to see if there were problems and note them. And in the pre trip, you would be required to be satisfied that the vehicle is safe for operation. And there's no way to do either of those things without looking at it, and looking at it is on duty. It's just really no getting around it. Uh, DOT doesn't like if you don't put the location in the description in your e-logs. That's all that's ever been required is city and state of change of duty status. Some companies have more than that. 
I worked for a place years ago. They made you write the address down uh, that if you couldn't find it. So everywhere you were, you, I had to write the full address, 1682 Western Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, which is ridiculous. But the DOT only requires city and state of change of duty status or closest intersection, that kind of thing. That's all they require. And I don't ever personally recommend putting extra information down unless your company makes you, like pre-trip, fueling, post-trip, uh, getting out of truck to shoot driver with black powder pistol. I don't ever recommend writing any of those things down. My better half wants to ride with me this summer. All right. I'm not allowed to take her. Oh, as I gave up my hazmat on your CDL. Yikes. <laughs> That's pretty good. Self-driving trucks coming. Uh, yeah, way in the future. How long till robo trucks roll? Well, it's decades before they're taking our jobs. There's a few of them out. Uh, but it's decades before they get it figured out. The car, the semi that I have, can't even figure out when the white lines show up. Okay, so it disappears. Oh, it can't read the lines. It is a long way. And have you seen them? There are some on the web. There's a few companies checking them. It's ringed with radar and LIDAR, other kind of radar lasers. One rock, one bird, it turns off and the thing's parked. So they got a lot to figure out before that happens. Oh, they'll have to rip the roads up and do cameras do the or cameras do the corrections. They're going to have to change all the signs, they said, so that the trucks can communicate with road signs like stop signs, yield signs, use left lane signs, and they'll all communicate back and forth with each other so that it will know in advance when it's coming up to a stop sign. It won't just read it. So in the bad weather, it'll be sending a signal to the truck. It'll know to stop. How long before all that happens? They can't even fix the potholes in Indiana. Did you see that on I-69 north of Indianapolis? Rather than fixing the potholes, they were just making everybody go 45 miles an hour. Your e-log has a GPS error, not logging the location. Company made me do paper logs. That's correct. If you have an e-log error, you can do paper logs. I'm going to say, I think it's eight days before the company has to submit for an extension, which they can do by email. It's easy for them to do. Otherwise, you're supposed to carry a paper with you. We all have one which you fill out that says on this date at this time, my e-log stopped working. And so now I'm using a paper log and you sign it and you present them that paper and you just carry these with you. That's how they're doing it here. So that if it stops somewhere on the road, you know, you can just start a paper log, which you're required to carry a paper log with you. So be sure to always have one with you. Uh, you Interesting. Did that woman log that she shot that guy at love? She would be required to log that is on duty time because she was still uh, fueling, uh, you know, in the fuel island. So, yeah, she brought, I, she looked, there was a picture of her and uh, she looked like the kind of person that would log everything. Uh, I don't like how companies use a point system in the dash cam. Like they said, they see a glare in your windshield Mob using a mobile device. I agree. Look, I don't like the cameras that face you. I don't like it. They should stop using them. Some companies, even Swift, stopped uh, filming the driver. So if you're at a company that runs a camera, go tell them, look, Swift doesn't even do this. They stopped using them. So I don't like them at all. Most uh, our stupid radar doesn't work on my truck in the rain, fog, snow, ice, hill, overpass. Yeah, clouds, high humidity, they don't work. Uh, if it's partly cloudy, it may not work. Yeah, so Ivona, how long do you think before the truck drives itself? It reads grid, uh, overhead signs, and then it's got, oh, warrant, collision warning comes up. The whole thing turns red. It's decades before they get that figured out. Most newer trucks are already implemented stuff like Tesla has, like lane detection. Yes, it, when it works. Radar to see the speed of the vehicle you're trailing. That's true, but it doesn't hardly ever work. They never work, like I've always said. They don't ever work For in the snow. It snows a little bit of snow. The thing's covered with snow, it stops working. They got to figure all that out first. Drivers have it made. We used to have to wait in lines at the payphone to call for directions. Oh, that's true. But then there were more payphones, right? You go in the J and there are 40 phones in their own little booth because that was always my favorite place to uh, call the wife from the Flying J using a phone card. Ever remember that? You punched all these 50 million numbers in and it uh, charged your home phone. You thought you're going to have to do paper logs today. Always have one. Everybody at ELD have a paper log with you. You're required to have it. They're talking six to ten years before the first over-the-road drivers, the very first ones, maybe. 
And so then how long before they replace a million trucks? They're talking about microchipping the highway make driverless trucks do more. Yes. They want to have sensors in the road and they'll have a thing that points down on the truck and it'll read the road sensors to help keep it in the lane when the lane keep thing doesn't work. How many, uh, you know, there's like 7 trillion miles of highway in the United States. I don't know how much there is. I went to public school. But how long before they get to put sensors? They can't even fix the holes in the road. And then what if a sensor gets popped out of the road because it's some pothole? Now your truck drives off the side of a cliff? I don't think so. They have it turned off, but if they see a glare from your phone on the other side, oh, so they're looking, oh, nice. you got to put an anti-glare coating on the uh, phone, of course, which they have. You absolutely could do that. Uh, you're right, they have rows of phone booths at truck stops. Now the millennials have cell phones. It's not just millennials. I think pretty much everybody has a cell phone now, <laughs> certainly. Good luck repaving a highway that has a microchip in it. Oh, yeah, they don't even repave them now. Be <laughs> They're going to microchip every mile of highway. There's 17 trillion miles of highways. Little remote sensors everywhere. Not here yet, but think about robo-driving. It's just years away. No way. Decades. Uh, since I'm in my extreme upper 30s, it, you know, I'll just barely see the uh, beginnings of this. They work on it every trip. They think they get it fixed. It's never fixed. Exactly, right? I've owned the same problem. You take it over there. I, only, I don't even take it in now in between services, you know, when it's due for its service. So just when it goes in for service, I say, oh, this doesn't work. And they're like, oh, we'll look at it. And then it works for a week and then it doesn't work again. So I totally, I totally agree. The robot road repair comes. Yeah, it refixes your truck and then murders you. Uber has driverless trucks operating in Arizona. A few of them, a few of them, right? And they have surge trucking, surge truck pricing. So the driverless truck backing in the dock and unloading it too? Well, there's no reason it couldn't back in the dock. I personally have been to warehouses, and probably many of you, where you do not open the doors of your truck when you back in. It's usually refrigerated warehouses. You back in and they open the doors on the inside. So there's no reason the truck could not back into a dock like that by itself. Probably better than we do. It'll be done quicker. They'll just fill up the potholes with the sensors. Oh, that just dump a box of them in there. Truckers coach, call 1-800-CALL-ATT to stand in line. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I had that phone card from Sprint, F-O-N. Phone card, I cannot remember the number now. Of course, it's been so long. But call ATT and then wait. Be in line. And uh, even then, nobody was showering. So, ironically, it, it never changed. I think public opinion can't be swayed about having a tank unmanned vehicle. It's going to be, it'll take a whole generation to sway everybody's opinion to where, because uh, a lot of young people don't drive. I don't know why, right? Oh, I don't want to drive. Well, you're ridiculous. But so it'll take a lot of time before it gets turned all the way around. Totally. Dial down the center full. Yeah, you could just go right down the middle of it. Robo driving people. It's never, we will not see it. I want to be in only 21 might see it, but the rest of us know. Right. <laughs> Right, we're just never going to see it, though, in any kind of widespread numbers. A few trucks. I love the robo-truck coming out. It fixes it, drags you out of the truck, murders you, and then it drives away. The robots do the lifting. They don't sleep or take a meth, right? That's true. Or spit in the food they prepare. I don't like this. but Yeah, it's not going to happen. That is going to be so long away. I mean, so long before it can figure out how to drive down the road. California's robots set on low trailers. Some Amazons have uh, robots that go pick stuff. So I think that one might come first. There's no reason a palletized load couldn't be unloaded by a robot forklift because in the warehouse, they could put the sensors down in the warehouse and then not have any problems in there. It's not like they have to keep fixing them on the roads. So absolutely, that would work much better inside the warehouse before, before it comes out on the roads for us. Oh, nice, Tim. Right, exactly. That won't ever, I'll never see that. The beginning, how do you flip off a robo-driver? Yeah, you don't, because then they get out of the truck and kill you. Did nobody see Terminator? He drove a truck in that. The end of that, he drove a cab over, of all things. That is the future. Ivona can't afford robots to unload the trailer. You know what? There'll still be a robot lumper fee. Walmart will have robots, and they'll still charge you $387 robot lumper fee they go oh well it's more now 
robots that have to charge the batteries. We have to have sensor replacements. It'll cost even more. Uh, here's the old one, the payphone at each table in the truck stop. Oh, my gosh. Trucker coach, I totally forgot about that. Every booth at a, the restaurant at the truck stop had its own phone in it. You could make your call right from the booth. Oh, man. Yes, absolutely. You could get out your phone card, your AT&T card or my F-O-N Sprint phone card and dial in a 50 million number code and have it charged to your home phone and make a call right there. And you sat in the trucker section, of course, so you could get served first where it's truckers only in that section. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. My phone is hungry. Yeah. What are you doing to us, Coach? Here? You're, you're making everybody hungry. Boy, that is that is really something. I wonder how many of us have done that because I sat at many of those booths and you too apparently making these calls from the phone card. It, that has been, it must be 20 years since I've seen a, a phone at a booth like that. And most truck stops now just have one pay phone somewhere, somewhere in the back. You don't see, you know, any truck stop that has more than a couple pay phones. You're like, wow, is this like, is this drug dealer central in here or whatever? You could you could also call uh, and page your wife too. We had pagers. You could pay and then beepers, right? So you could also do that. Send a little code for a page. Those were the days. You hated putting in all forty numbers on the phone card to get a busy signal. Yeah, you would take four minutes to dial all the numbers in, and then somebody at home is talking. That's before you could get through. A big huge Mike is cooking spaghetti. We need to go find big huge Mike. And uh, I'll bring a plate and a fork and some grated cheese. I remember those in the booths when traveling off and when you were a kid. Huh, that makes us feel great. But that's true, though. They used to have them. Every booth had its own phone. Boy, those were something. Cash is king. Picked up the load at the Bridgestone factory. Our robots loaded and unloaded all the trucks there. Well, that's pretty good. I've unloaded a couple of loads of tires and... Uh, <laughs> They can have the robots unloaded. Oh, Ivona's got the garlic bread. Hey, big huge Mike, we are all set for this. When is this? When's the feast happening? Holy mackerel! What? The, where was the Bridgestone factory, by the way, that uh, unloaded these tires with robots? I'd love to see a robot tire unloader. Does it roll them down the uh, truck? That's how I used to do them. You'd set a tire up in the middle of the trailer and throw them off the stack and bounce them off of there. If you got it right, it would roll at the back, and there'd be somebody in the back to uh, to catch the tires. And then you smelled like a tire for the rest of the day. Big, huge Mike in three minutes. All right. Well, we're waiting. Trucker Hershey, time for him to go. Got to see if they're working on your truck. It is time for me to go, too, uh, But uh, at uh, as we go along. But I appreciate everybody being here because I have to uh, – hit the road and go to work too. make the company money, as they say. Uh, Rodney, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. What would happen if the sensor software gets hacked? Oh, your truck will drive off the road and kill you. Look, the hacking, they're going to have to solve that too, right? Somebody's going to, they did that with Jeep. They hacked into a Jeep and stopped it on the road in the software that it currently has. There's a video about it. I forget who did it. A big site did it and hacked into a Jeep while it was driving down the road because it's internet connected. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, they're going to crash into each other. They could have them crash into each other or crash into a bridge. Oh, my gosh. There's no good way to do it. <laughs> the robot lumper fee. You think I'm kidding? They're going to have that on there, too, and they're going to charge extra. They're going to, These robot lumpers cost more than the regular lumpers. Hey, thanks, Big Huge Mike. It's been great today. Thanks for coming in, and uh, thanks for the spaghetti for the rest of us. They had the phone in the jukebox. I haven't seen the jukeboxes in a while, but I do remember the phone. Jerry, thank you for coming in today. Evil Ken Evil. I love it. All right. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Thank you for uh, coming in. I appreciate that. X load. Imagine arguing with a lippy robot. Oh, the lumpers. Yeah. And you're going to be sitting in the truck. I'm going to say this before I go. You're going to be unloaded at this Walmart with robot lumpers. You're going to be sitting there and you're gonna, there's not going to be any... You're like, why am I not being unloaded? Oh, the robots are at lunch. They charge for an hour for lunch. It's nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. The robots are going to take robot lunches. They're going to have robot breaks. They're going to say three robots called off today, so we don't have as many robots as we normally have. It's, there's going to be no solution. 
the robots are going to come in in skinny jeans and and uh, hiking boots with the bun. I mean, it's just nothing is going to change. It's going to be the same as it is now. Totally the same. A Sprint phone card had a 10-digit right. Okay, so while Bill, you had one too. That was silver, right? F-O-N card. You had to dial all this number in. Lickety split. It was great. Thanks for coming in today. I appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate everybody being here every week. Believe me. Don't forget next week, right? The giveaway here on the live show of the C400 XT. So be here for that. Live every Monday at 1. Write to me, Mark, at truckinganswersnation.com. Okay? I answer all my emails. So thanks for being here, Mad Maldi, Ivona. I appreciate uh, your work here today. As always, as a moderator, I do appreciate it. Uh, Nick, see you later. Thanks, UFO. Cash is king. Oh, it was good to have you on here today. I'll be following you along out there. You're planning on frying shrimp. I'm still full from the a big, huge Mike spaghetti, but uh, that could, that wouldn't be bad. And uh, thank you, big, huge Mike. Headed out to work, though. And I will see everybody online. Thanks for being here. Live show next week. See you on there. Be safe.